Hello and welcome to Let's Play Space Quest V, The Next Mutation. And if I need to explain to you what that's a reference to, then you really have been living under a rock for the past 20 years. After the release of Space Quest IV, the two guys from Andromeda parted ways. Mark Crow moved to Dynamics, a daughter company of Sierra, while Scott Murphy stayed in Oakhurst with Sierra. The two would never work together on a Space Quest game again. Sierra was apparently getting swamped with work, and Dynamics volunteered to do Space Quest V with Mark Crow in the director's seat. So although the game was made using Sierra's SCI and shows the Sierra logo at the start, it was actually made by Dynamics. Unfortunately, Space Quest V does not have a voice version. Apparently they were planning to make one, but internal politics and some financial trouble at Dynamics prevented it from happening. Which means that once again you'll have to do with my uh, incredible... <coughs> <coughs> voice talents. Uh, Space Quest V is also part of a newer generation of Sierra games, uh, and it was around this time that they stopped making music optimized for the Roland MT32, and used the general MIDI standard instead. Although the game still supports the MT32, it doesn't use any of the MT32's unique features. Although this still sounds pretty good, certainly better than the Sound Blaster music, you can actually get better results with any decent general MIDI compatible synthesizer. As it happens, the de facto standard GM synth for this kind of thing in the mid 90s was the Roland Sound Canvas. And that is what the music for most games from this era uh, was written for. As you know, I strive for both the highest quality and authenticity when it comes to music in my Let's Plays. So I've recorded the music in this Let's Play using a genuine Roland Sound Canvas SC88. This will get us as close as possible to how the music was supposed to sound. Alright, let's see what Roger has been up to since his return from his time-traveling adventures. Okay, one consequence of the fact that we're not using the uh, MT32 is that there is no fun message to look at on the LCD display, because General MIDI does not support that. Okay, read Technobabble actually is the help. But we're just gonna see the introduction and start a new game. Captain's Lock, SCS Excalibur, Stardate 2709.67, Fleet Admiral Roger Wilco commanding. The Excalibur is on course to investigate the mysterious disappearance of several ships in the uncharted region of space known as the Menudo Triangle. I no doubt have been selected for this mission due to my great achievements as a military leader and matchless diplomatic skills. That doesn't sound like the Roger Wilco we know. I go forward with total confidence in my ship and my crew, yet I am vaguely uneasy. I cannot put memories of traveling to the future and meeting my son out of my mind. Each night, my dreams are haunted by the image of the woman he said would one day be my wife. I know she's out there, somewhere. But that's not important right now. The fate of trillions rides on the decisions I may have to make in the next several hours. As captain of the Star Confederacy's proudest flagship, 
I must follow the supreme guideline. To boldly go where no man has... No, no, no. To bravely traverse where no creature has traversed. Hmm, that's not it. Ah, skip it. Admiral, strike ships coming in at point three five. Shields up, battle stations, lock weapons. Neutron beams locked, proton torpedoes armed. Tactical fire neutron beams. Helm hard to forge. Cadet Wilco, what in the name of the Seven Star Cluster are you doing in the bridge simulator? Get your sorry carcass out of there and get back to class where you belong, Space Cadet. And if I catch you in there again without permission, I'll have you tossed out of the Academy so fast you'll get warp disorientation. It was only a simulation. I thought it was weird that Roger was a fleet admiral. Looks like they have a rodent problem in here. His illusions of spacefaring grandeur cruelly shattered by Captain Quirk, Roger Wilco exits from the bridge simulator into the hallways of the Star Confederacy Space Academy, where he has enrolled himself in an attempt to realize his lifelong dream of becoming a starship captain. That's quite a step up from being a janitor. The last several months have not been easy for our hero. What with having to juggle time between skipping classes, snoozing through lectures, and spending long moments considering the implications of actually opening a textbook. But our fearless former sanitation engineer has stumbled resolutely past these obstacles, pursuing his goal with unwavering determination, blissfully unaware that fate was about to hurl another spitball in his direction. Well, that's always the case, isn't it? Right. So, it seems Roger has given up his promising career in cleaning up other people's messes to become captain of a starship. And he's doing it in his usual half-assed way. Okay. One thing I like about this game is that they actually have the score in the title bar again, which not a lot of VGA games do. So you can more easily see where you're going and uh, how far you are along. And actually, the maximum score in this game is 5,000. That might make you think that the game is really, really long, but that's not the case. It just seems that uh, the Space Quest universe is suffering from points inflation. Let's speed things up a little bit. All right, let's look around at where we are. Apparently, it's the Star Confederacy Academy. This hallway is one of four that encircled the Academy landing bay. Students, faculty, and members of the Star Confederacy staff used them to travel from place to place within the station. Well, that is usually what hallways are used for. Through this doorway is the Academy's bridge simulator, the scene of your latest humiliation at Starcon Academy. This ergonomically designed, state-of-the-art personal access corridor is designed to allow sentient creatures to traverse the station with maximum efficiency. I think you actually get a different message when you look at it sometimes. You find yourself in yet another of the lovely and scenic Starcon Academy hallways. Check out the attractive light beige on dark beige color scheme and take a big whiff of that freshly recycled air. Ah. It's nice that they don't repeat messages, although do, uh, they do have the same set of messages used between every hallway here. There's a panel there. This panel, when it works, allows the user to call up a 3D holographic schematic of the Starcon Space Academy. Ooh, that sounds neat. Oh. 
Uh, let's try and use it. Darn, the holomap directory isn't working right now. And it's a shame, because the map system is really cool looking, with Gorath shading, texture mapping, and ray traced images of every room in the complex. Um, okay. I guess they didn't feel like actually making that. Well, we'll see what else we can find here, and what we can actually do in the next video. Welcome back! Seems Roger is now a space cadet here at the Star Confederacy Academy. Let's take a look at some of the ships that are apparently waiting in this docking bay. This one looks strangely familiar. This aging behemoth has outlived its intended lifespan by several decades, and will soon be heading for the scrapyards. Well, that's a shame, because it looks like the Enterprise to me. An Alpha-class strike fighter from the Colony Worlds. This baby has it all. Speed, maneuverability, and enough firepower to blast apart a comet. Too bad you'll probably never even get within shouting distance of one in your natural lifetime. It seems the narrator still has a very high opinion of us. The Starcon Registry lists this ship as the personal launch of Ambassador Beatrice Wankmeister from the G6 Squadron. You dimly recall hearing her name once before, but the effort to remember anything further results in nothing more than a storm of misfired brain synapses and a dull headache. Hmm, Beatrice Wankmeister. The observant might notice that that's actually the name of Roger's future wife. From Space Quest 4. Could it be that she is around? Ships of every size and description occupy the docking bay. Can we look at the people? Astro techs bustle about the ships in the Academy landing bay. What this... A small janitorial closet is situated at one end of the hallway. Of course, we cannot have... Um, uh, uh, a Space Quest game without janitorial closets. Can we go in there? You don't have the time to waste mucking about in the closet right now. Even though that is actually Roger's favorite pastime, isn't it? Mucking about in janitorial closets. Hmm. Well, let's see what else we can find around here. A couple more ships, and a hallway leading east. Oh, that's... yeah. We've seen that message before. This hallway leads to the Academy's main rotunda. Well, we'll check that out later. This space station serves the Star Confederation... I thought it was the Star Confederacy, anyway. That's both its major academy and an important... Oh. <laughs> I wasn't quick enough. Twelve full-sized Star Cruisers can be outfitted simultaneously in the massive Starcon vehicle bay making it the second largest structure of its kind in the known universe, according to Guinea's Log of Galactic Records. Let's see what these ships are. This three-man fighter was captured from the dreaded Pirates of Pestilon during their daring attempt to escape the confines of Space Quest 3. Uh-huh. Well, they should stay in the game they came from. These are apparently the things that uh, followed us around. Tried to shoot us down, and actually did in my Let's Play. A Delton frigate from the G6 Quadrant. Hopefully a ship like this will one day be yours, provided, of course, that you make it through the Starcon Academy's rigorous training regimen. Well, that's gonna take a bloody miracle. Named for his beloved wife, this sleek corvette called Lady Plus Bucker is reserved for the Academy Commandant's use exclusively. Recently, several freshmen were disciplined for scandalously altering the ship's name as a cadet initiation prank. I don't see what you need to alter about that name to make it scandalous, but anyway. Well, let's uh, keep heading uh, south. Looks like this is a circular hallway, so I guess we should eventually get back to where we came from. More ships! This patrol craft was damaged in a skirmish with smugglers on the rim of the galaxy and is currently undergoing a major overhaul. Fortunately, it suffered less damage than the ship Roger tried, le tried to place in hyperspace before leaving space dock. See, Roger is doing as well as ever. This bulk cargo freighter contains supplies for the colony on Clorox 2. Hmm. 
I wonder if we'll ever see that place. Trainers like this one are used to instruct cadets in basic spaceflight techniques. Due to the relative lack of skill by cadets, these ships suffer a high rate of attrition. Especially when they put Roger... Uh, oh. The current record for number of ships wrecked stands at 3 and is currently held by Roger, which includes a notable incident where he totaled the ship without even leaving the hangar. Odds are 2 to 1 among his classmates that Roger will break his own record before graduating. Yeah, Roger isn't doing so hot. I don't see how he could possibly graduate. This is the door to conference room A. Can we look inside? This window looks into the conference room. Currently, there is some kind of meeting going on. I wonder what happens. Your security clearance is too low to enter this room. In fact, it's so low you need a pass just to go to the restroom. Okay, that's low. That's really low. You've always wondered what this panel does, but have never been able to figure out its function. The explanation was probably given in one of the many class lectures slept away during your tenure here at the Academy. That might be the case. Are there actual places we can go in this uh, academy? More ships. This sleek little beauty is for sale. It can be yours for a mere 10,000 buckazoids. Dial 1555 Good Cars and ask for Fester Blatz. Hey, wasn't he the guy who ran World of Wonders? This ship once belonged to the two guys from Andromeda, but was seized when one of them walked out on his 10,000 buckazoid tab in the Academy Lounge. Probably Scott Murphy then, because I don't think Mark Rowe would put that accent in about himself. The SCS Lollipop. A good ship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for sale items, Academy social events, and scores for the SAT tests, when they become available, are posted on this bulletin board. Ooh, the SAT test. That sounds important. This door leads to one of the Academy's classrooms. Currently, the students in your Space Piloting 101 class are taking the Starcon Aptitude Test. I guess that's the SAT test. Shouldn't we be taking that to them? Fellow members of the tightly knit Sarkon Cadet Brigade. And this does not have a message. This locker is used by various professors to store teaching aids for their respective classes. Okay, let's see if we can go into the classroom, because that test sounds important, so we probably should take it. Sorry I'm late, Professor. You mean the... <coughs> Stark on aptitude test is today? Yes, sir. I'll get started right away. What's that? Come talk to you after class? Yes, sir. Uh-oh, we have to take a test, and we haven't studied. Oh, let's see, maybe we can wing it. Um, let's see. Gronko is commanding a Nova-class scout ship when he finds himself face-to-face -face with three Horak battle cruisers. He should A. Surrender in the face of impossible odds. B. Pretend they aren't there. C. Activate his ship's self-destruct mechanism, also known as the Janeway solution. D. Beam over a pick-you-up bouquet. Or E. Reboot. Uh, I don't know. What do we do? I haven't studied! And no, this isn't copyright protection, in case you were wondering. Um, well, I guess it would probably be A. But I don't want to just guess here. I think that would, be, uh, would end badly. So, what would any self-respecting cadet do in this situation? Cheat, of course! But there is a droid. Currently, the Proctormatic 9000 is not scanning you. If you're gonna make a move, now is the time. 
A Proctoromatic 9000 anti-cheat droid floats malevolently about the classroom, maintaining a vigilant lookout for any student hijinks during the SAT test. Currently, the droid is monitoring you with its visual scanners. Best keep your eyes on your own test. Yes, we should um, only cheat when he's not looking, and you really do want to uh, do that. Um, because if you don't, well, you get expelled in a rather literal manner. So let's see if I try to cheat while he's looking. Uh-oh, busted. And they flush you out the airlock. Maybe you should have taken the correspondence course. Right. So, only cheat when he's not looking. Well, I guess we'll have to do that in the next video. Welcome back. We have to take a test, but of course Roger is wholly unprepared for it. So we have to cheat. But who should we treat, cheat from? We have two options. We can either look at, look at this guy's test or this guy's test. Let's take a look at our fellow classmates to determine who would be the best person to cheat from, and also to check who everyone is. Cadet Schleppo appears to be dull and stodgy, much like yourself. Better not cheat from him, then. Wouldn't be much point. Check out the brain pound on this guy. He's probably smarter than your whole family. So obviously, he's the guy we need to cheat from. Let's look at the other people, just for fun. You have a strange suspicion you've seen this woman before, but you just can't quite place her. I think she might be the triple-breasted woman from Space Quest 1 VGA, but I'm not sure. From the Cronian bar. Uh, let's check this guy. He looks like Worf. Woof is the senior class Ambu Jitsu ch champion at the Academy. It's very cleverly uh, disguised that it's not Worf by calling him Woof. Isn't that what uh, Loxana Troy used to call Worf, anyway? Cadet Offboffer is one of the horniest individuals you're likely to meet. Literally. This guy with one eye? Cadet Muckblob likes to keep one eye out for trouble, which frequently causes him to bump into things, because he only has one eye. Obviously. Cadet Antana has been the brunt of many jibes concerning her cranial appendages. Well, what did you expect with that name? It's you, Roger Wilco, space hero extraordinaire. <coughs> okay, let's do some cheating. Hmm, looks like the answer to question one is D. <laughs> He's noticed. Which I really wouldn't have called, considering what D actually is, but anyway. And, fortunately, he will always be on the same question as you, no matter how long you wait. You'd think he'd go quicker, considering how smart he supposedly is, but anyway. There are ten questions in total, and we'll have to cheat on each and every one of them, even though we only get points for the first one. But the answer was D in this case. So let's see. Two. When encountering an alien ship for the first time, you should immediately... A. Open fire with every weapon at your disposal. This is the Kirk approach to diplomacy. B. Broadcast Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries over the comm link. Um, right. C. Beam your entire crew over to their ship as a gesture of goodwill. This is the Archer approach to diplomacy. D. B. Then A. This is the kick-ass approach to diplomacy. Or E. None of the above. I'm going to guess it's E. But let's cheat anyway. Oh. Ah, I thought he was not looking. <laughs> well. That didn't... wasn't my intention. Okay, well, even though we already know the answer to one is D, we still need to cheat for it. Alright, let's try and do this properly. Oh, come on! He was at his back turn! I never have trouble with this. It's a curse the Let's Plays again.
Okay. This time, let's make sure he's not watching. Yes, it's E. I was correct. Let's see. Question 3. Before beaming down to an unexplored planet for the first time, you should be sure to check A. To see that your seatbelt is fastened and tray tables are locked securely into the upright position. B. Your fly. C. Your life insurance coverage. That sounds like a good idea. D. The Fetzer valve and your oxygen mask. Or E. The planet's atmospheric readings. Um, I'm gonna guess E again, but still, we need to cheat. Yeah, I'm not gonna chance it anymore when he has his back <laughs> turned. When I enter this uh, screen, I'm just gonna wait until he actually turns. And it was indeed E again. Some of these things actually will come up later in the game, so I hope you're taking notes. 4. You're marooned on an alien planet with no weapons and a killer android out for your blood. You should A. Gather basic ingredients to make gunpowder and fashion a cannon from vines and sticks. No, 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 no. That's the standard procedure if you're fighting a Gorn, not an android. B. Stuff a banana in its exhaust pipe. C. Drop a big rock on the robot and shout, Hasta la vista, baby. D. Roll in the mud to camouflage yourself. E. Climb a tree, flap your arms wildly, and scream, Tweet! Tweet! at the top of your lungs in order to mimic the mating behavior of the ruby-throated archer and swine falcon as a diversionary tactic. I don't know. None of these sound particularly good. Apparently it's C. Especially the shouting hasta la vista is bound to be important there. Question 5! You're on an EVA with a partner, and you notice his face is turning blue and he is clutching wildly at his throat. This is a sign that A. You will soon need a new partner. B. In a burst of creative insight, he has created a new dance called the Moonwalk. C. He is suffering from a vitamin deficiency and needs to eat more leafy green vegetables. D. He fell for the old golf bar ball in the air hose trick. That sounds like a very cruel prank. E, A, and D. Okay, uh... Oh, I'm gonna guess E. Let's see. And it's E! I was right again. Man, I'm good. Also, possibly I'm che double cheating. Six. To ensure that your crew's microwave meals are heated adequately and evenly on board your ship, you should A. Wrap everything in aluminum foil. B. Cook each meal at the maximum power setting for 45 minutes. Well, that would ensure it's heated adequately, definitely. But maybe overdoing it a tad. C. Put a live space varmint in with each meal so you can more easily determine when it's done. D. Hug the thing and settle for roasting wieners on the maneuvering jets. Maybe not the best option, but fun. E. Inject a radioactive plutonium isotope into each piece of food. When it glows, it's ready. Oh, I see. What our brainy compatriot thinks, he thinks it's C. Put a live space varmint in it. Okay. Whatever. I don't even know what a space varmint is. 7. If Grieb leaves the Crab Nebula at 3200 GST, Galactic Standard Time, and travels at 9.75 million ZPM... I'd like to know what the Z stands for, please. Uh, how long will it take him to reach Planet Davikon 5 if he has the solar wind at his back? A. 49.3 hours. B. He will never reach Davikon 5. The solar wind is highly unstable and will blow him off course. C. 3.75 standard days. D. 49.30 GST. E. Never. The neutron star at the center of the Crab Nebula is so massive that Grief ship can never reach escape velocity. Um, let's see... Um, add those two values, then divide by the root of pi... Um, carry the one... I think it's E. Ah, 
I was right again! Eight. How fast does light travel through a vacuum? A. 186,000 miles per second. Which is the actual correct answer. So that's probably not the one we're looking for. B. Very, 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 very fast. What is this? The Hitchhiker's Guide? C. 669,600,000 miles per hour. Ah, uh, I wonder if that's the same as answer A. It would have to be 3,600 times 186,000. Which, unfortunately, is a little bit beyond what I can do in my head. Anyway, um... D. Depends on whether it's an upright or canister vacuum. Well, that's the silliest answer, so that's probably the right one. And it is D! Nine, which is an example of a fuzzy boundary? A, the area in space between two planetary bodies where a smaller third object is not clearly under the gravitational influence of either. B, the event horizon of a supermassive black hole. C, the place where a seeding hairline gives way to bare scalp. D, the point at which the marginal utility of trying to squeeze the last bit of toothpaste from the tube is offset by the opportunity cost from of going to the store for a new one. Um, okay. I'm not even gonna try and guess this one. It's A! Wow, that's actually sort of a sensible answer. Ten! It's the final question. To successfully accomplish a manual molecular reintegration bypass on a standard transporter unit, you should A. Reverse the face polarity of the interface grid. B. Jiggle the handle. C. Pray fervently to whatever deity you happen to believe in. D. C. Then B. E. Switch to US Sprint. Yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of promotional stuff from Sprint in this game. Apparently they uh, got some advertising space. And... This is another one that's actually a hint for later in the game. Well, sort of a hint. Um... And it's A! It should finish the test! The test's over already! Yes sir, I agree that cleaning the academy crest is an appropriate punishment for being late to class. I'll get right on it! Okay, well, hopefully we got through that test okay, but now we're, it seems we have to uh, fulfill our punishment and clean the uh, Academy Crest, wherever the hell that is, which uh, we'll have to do in the next video. Welcome back. Well, we just cheated our way through um, the aptitude test, and... Because we were late, we have to clean the uh, uh, the Academy Crest. And even though it's quicker to go south, I'm actually going to go north. Hey, some of our fellow cadets. I recognize them from class. That's a small group of your brother ca cadets. Can we talk to them? Take off, Wilco! Um, I see we're not very popular. <coughs> Isn't that the guy we cheated from? No, ma no wonder he's uh, pissed at us. Hey, I know those two fellows. You can't look at them, though. It's Darth Vader and Obi-Wan Kenobi who are dueling. A pair of your cadet classmates are deeply engaged in conversation here. Do they want to talk to us? Go play in the airlock, Roger. Apparently not. 
You uh, might notice that we have an extra icon here, and this is actually the command icon. No smell and uh, taste in this game, unfortunately. And, well, th we can't use this now, but we'll need it later. Sure thing, Admiral, we'll get right on it. They don't appreciate being commanded by us. That's why I wanted to go north, because uh, you can only see the uh, two guys dueling if you come from uh, the south. Some more bright, shining faces of Starcon's elite cadet corps. He's the guy who walked into stuff. Get lost, Wilco. Nobody likes us. Anyway, we need to get into the janitorial closet here. No! Oh, that went well. Let's see, what do we have? Now look at what you've done. Quick, call a janitor. It's a scrubomatic floor cleaner with patterned sit and spin cleaning action. Well, it seems that that would be what we need. You cram the scrubomatic into your seemingly bottomless pocket. Yes, we've already established Roger has a TARDIS in his pants. These bright orange safety cones can use to discourage foot traffic while cleaning large floor spaces. That's also something that could be useful. You cram the safety cones into your seemingly bottomless pocket. And then he automatically shuffles the rest back inside. Alright, now with the um, cleaning equipment in hand, we can go to the main rotunda. And clean it. And I happen to know that the main rotunda is this way. Isn't that an old Atari game? <laughs> They're playing there. <laughs> I'm not sure. It appears to be one of the nine moons of Nova. I'm sure that's a reference to something. Oh, can't look at this. It says Security Clearance Alpha beyond this point, so we can't go south. This computer monitor displays pertinent information. Whatever that is. This is the left side of a rotunda hallway. From here you can amble north to another hallway, stroll east to the bay hallways, or take the gravity lift to the floor of the main rotunda. Which is where we actually want to go. Cool. I want to lift like that. This is the Academy Crest, and we're supposed to clean it. The Starcon Crest is dull and dingy. Looks like it could use a good scrubbing. Well, that's what we're here for. Now, first we need to put up the safety cones, otherwise people will keep walking into our way, making our life miserable. Also making it impossible to actually finish this puzzle successfully. Well, puzzle. I call it a puzzle. It's more sort of a dexterity test. Not a very difficult one, though. And sort of fun. Let's see how this thing works. How does this thing work? Yo! Okay, well basically you just want to scrub every tiny inch of this thing. That's not a, not a problem if you miss a tiny bit. I do think you are on a time limit, although it's <coughs> fairly reasonable. Oh, you don't, don't take ridiculously long. You should be okay. Okay, now we just hit the center left. Yay! We made it! Hey, who's that? Quirk. As you can see in Messner of Wankmeister, we run a very tight ship here at the Academy. This institution is the pride of the Star Confederation and one of the best of its kind in the known universe. 
It's nice to see our tax buckazoids aren't going completely to waste, Captain Quirk. Here we are, Miss uh, Wankmeister. This is the main rotunda. It was dedicated on Stardate 09 and 2097.27. Ambassador? Excuse me, aren't you Roger Wilco, the man who foiled the Sarian some years back? She knows who we are! <laughs> Sparkle. Suddenly it all comes rushing back. It's her, the woman from the holodisc in Space Quest 4. Now's your big chance, Roger. Say something clever and romantic. I'm sure that will go well. Uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, yes. Way to sweep her back onto her feet, Rog. Nice to see you haven't lost your golden touch with women. That went well. Excuse me, uh, Ambassador, but we should be heading to the conference now. You're not at all what I expected, Wilco. See you around. Hold on a minute, cadet. Looks like you missed a spot. Hehe. <laughs> Uh, sir, you better watch your step. The floor's still really wet and just a little bit... Slippery. <laughs> nice rug, Quirk. Is that a toupee or a roadkill? Huh? You did that on purpose, Wilco. I'm placing you on double secret probation. One more screw up and your space cadet days are over. I don't think Quirk likes us. Well, the feeling's mutual. Well, we didn't quite make a very good first impression with our future wife, but at least we got to see uh, Quirk fall on his ass, which is always fun. Can I take the cones? You don't want to pick up the cones up. You don't want to pick the cones up. The floor is still wet. As uh, Quirk just demonstrated. I guess we should put one of those things up with the uh, caution wet floor sign on it. Okay, well, uh, that's nice. Let's head back the way we came! Hey, another mouse. Or rat, or whatever it is. Going into the Great Master 2000. SAT scores, Gordon F. Phil. Einstein A. Phil. Wilco R. Huh? What was uh, that? Excuse me, Captain, you didn't raise your hand. Now, as I was saying, Ambassador Wankmeister, we are a fairly remote installation and I simply can't spare the ship to launch the kind of operation you suggest. I'm afraid you don't understand the potential ramifications of this problem, Admiral. If the sludge bandits continue to illegally dump toxic waste whenever and wherever they choose, the environmental consequences could be staggering. Entire planets could be devastated. Now there's an inconvenient truth. I think you overstate the issue, Ambassador. Even so, we have more than enough ships on patrol to put a stop to these sludge bandits, as you call them. Look, Ambassador, we have top-notch shift staff with the finest crews in the galaxy. Starcon accepts only the best and brightest for fleet training. Oh yeah? Then explain, Roger. You look, Rockhead. 
Illegal dumping is going on in this sector right under your polyweave. Our patrols have located dumping sites on four planets in the G6 quadrant alone. Hey, this is made from real hair. Uh, <clears throat> in any case, I'd like to hear more about these alleged dumping sites. Perhaps over dinner this evening? I have already transmitted the coordinates to Starcon Central Command, along with a list of suspected sites that we haven't been able to check out yet. Well then, that settles it. Captain Quirk, you shall go to these sites and investigate Ambassador Wenkmeister's allegations. Admiral, I'll be going along as an observer. I'm afraid that's impossible. Regulations strictly forbid civilian participation in military operations. Uh, Admiral, I think having the ambassador along would be a good idea. I'm sure the two of us could develop a productive working relationship. Admiral, may I remind you that I'm an official representative of the people of Quadrant G6 with full ambassadorial status, and as such, not subject to... Now, now, Ambassador, I'm sure Captain Quirk will do everything necessary to resolve the situation. There's no need for you to hinder him on this mission. This is my system, and my people we're talking about here. I'm going on that ship, and that's all there is to it. Case closed. We're adjourned. Good day, gentlemen. Youch, that's one lady you do not want to cross... Oh, great! The savior of the universe in all his glory. Isn't there a mob somewhere with your name on it? Well, there's the second impression screwed up as well. Hey, one of the admirals fell asleep. Way to go, Rog. Another sterling performance. Yeah, I caught the jerk trying to sneak some answers off my test. Here he comes. This is awful. I totally biffed on my set test. I'll never make Captain now. That's too bad, Cadet Block. How'd you make it out, Roger? I haven't seen my score yet. The SAT scores for our class are posted on the bulletin board, Roger. I sure hope you made out better than I did. Okay, well, it seems the SAT scores are in, and we're also royally out of time, so we'll continue in the next video. See how Roger did. Welcome back! It seems, uh, that the SAT scores are in, and Cadet Block here didn't, uh, do so well. I suppose his name is a play on Spock. After all, we have a, a Kirk rip off here, so why not block? By the way, nice touch that Quark has a toupee. After all, so does William Shatner in the later uh, Star Trek films. Okay, let's go and see the scores which be posted on the board outside the classroom, which is here. Looks like they're uh, standing in line. A crowd of despondent students is huddled around the bulletin board. Let's see how we did. Cadet Wilco, on behalf of the administration, I would like to congratulate you on receiving a perfect score on your SAT. Not in the entire history of Star Con Academy has a cadet achieved such high marks. You should be proud. On the recommendation of our test analysis computer system, you are to begin training for Captain C aboard one of our fine star cruisers. Captain Quirk will post your assignment. You have done the Academy proud. Sincerely, current Chief Commanding Officer's name here. Ooh! We passed with flying colors, thanks to a little bit of cheating, and also um, some luck with a rat climbing into the computer and chewing up some cables.
And now we're wearing a captain's uniform. And so, having undergone an intensive weekend captain's training seminar on the planet Oakhurst, Roger is shuttled to his new command, the SCS Eureka. Oakhurst is where Sierra is located, of course. Now, where's our new command? Is it that ship? No. That ship? Hey, that's not a starship. It's a garbage scow. No, it's a hoover. Figures. Yep, once a janitor, always a janitor, eh, Rog? Especially figures, considering the letter said that Captain Quirk would post our assignment, and he doesn't particularly like us. Hello, sir. I'm Subcorporal Drool, your nav and weapons officer on this heap. Flow is the name. I'm your comm specialist, Grade 4. Hello, crew. I'm your new commanding officer, Captain Roger Wilco. I know some of you may not be as excited as uh, to be serving on the Eureka as I am, but I promise you this. We are going to be the best gosh darn garbage scow in the entire Star Confederation. We have nothing to fear but fear itself, so hold your heads high, men. We shall overcome. All we are is dust in the wind, born free, running wild, with liberty and justice for all. So let's be all we can be. Remember, it's not just a job, it's an adventure. No! It was a chair, really? Looks like we've got a life one here, Flo. You said it, Drool. Right. Roger, also making a good uh, impression on his new crew. I wonder if these are the only true crew members we have. <coughs> Let's take a look around. The, oh, apparently I looked at the seat instead of myself. This much so sought-after seat is referred to simply as the chair by junior officers aspiring to command the starship within the Confederation. An inaudible subsonic hum... Uh, emanates from the machinery on the ceiling of the bridge. Auxiliary smoke detector. Smoke detector? That makes sense. This automated computer console controls critical functions of the Eureka, but what precisely these functions are, you haven't a clue. <coughs> it's not as if the captain of the ship should know anything about it or, or whatever. Drool mans the nav and weapons systems on the Eureka. Flo is the Eureka's communications officer. Um, we can actually go back here and meet an, our remaining crew member. There he is. Well, well, looky here. A brand spanking new, squeaky clean, neatly pressed captain has arrived. Pleased to meet you, um... Please, my friends call me Cliffy, but you can call me Clifford. I'm chief engineer for the Eureka. What the? Got something on his hand. Sorry about the mock captain, I dropped my wrench down the head. Uh, thanks? Now if you'll excuse me sir, I have some work to get back to. Right. Oh, another area of the Eureka. Let's take a quick look around here. This door leads to the Eureka's bridge. Beyond this door, the Eureka's science lab and transporter room. Enter at own risk. This lift goes to the Eureka's pod bay. Behind this door is the Eureka's refuse containment compartment. These controls open the door to the trash compartment. This button activates the lift to the Eureka's pod bay. The engineering section for Eureka. This is Cliffy's domain and he's more at home here than a game programmer is at his computer. Look at anything else here? No, I don't think so. No message here. 
pipes like this one carry heated water to tanks with cold water in them, and cooled water to tanks with hot water in them. Useful. Um, there is a toolbox here we can look at, but I'll do that later. We'll also look at the other area to the ship later. I mainly just wanted to come back here and talk to Cliffy before we leave. Of course, since he's obviously a spoof on Scotty, I gave him a Scotch accent. Or something resembling a Scotch accent. I like that every time you walk onto the bridge, these two are doing something uh, meaningless, and then when they spot you, they quickly try to uh, hide it. <coughs> yes, the chair's gonna do that every single time we sit down. Alright, uh, let's try and talk to our new uh, crew members. Uh, if we want to give them commands, we use the command icon. If we want to simply talk to them, we use the talk icon. Simple enough. The massive doors of the station's vehicle bay are visible on the view screen. Small monitors display information on the status of various functions on the Eureka and provide a means of intership communications. It's my head, but I can't look at it, apparently. You are seated in the very nerve center of the Eureka, the bridge. This is Flo, your cheerful, happy-go-lucky communications officer. Those terms don't really describe her. This is Drool, your navigation and weapons officer. There's a couple of buttons we have at our fingers here. This button is used to speak with the engineering section. This button is used to speak with... Oh. This button calls up the science section. This button sets the Eureka self-destruct mechanism. I'm sure we won't be needing that. Um, well, let's talk to our uh, crew, see if we can get to know them a little before we go under get underway. What do you want, sir? And we get some choices. Since we'll be working together, I thought it would be nice if we got to know each other a bit, Flo. I'm sure you did, sir, but it won't. Sheesh, who poured vinegar in your breakfast flakes this morning? My life stinks, and it's all your fault, sir. I don't follow you. You're a man, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yes. Well, there you go. Great! We have a man-hater on the bridge. Just what we needed. What was your previous posting, crewman? Previously I was assigned to the Phlegma, sir. But the self-important male swine, uh, I mean captain, and I didn't see I die. Die. He was just like my fourth husband. You'll have to excuse Flo. She has a bit of a problem dealing with male authority figures. But she's really not so bad after you get to know her. I'm sure. Can it, lobster boy? Sure. Looks like we're already getting off on the right foot. What happy set of circumstances left the Eureka captain's chair open for me? The Eureka's previous commanding officer uh, accidentally fell out of the airlock without a spacesuit. That's terrible. If you say so, sir. Um, something tells me she had something to do with this accident. I'm gonna steer clear of the airlock if she's around, that's for sure. Uh, well, we can also talk to Drool, but we'll do that in the next video. Welcome back. We have arrived in our new command, the SCS Eureka. And we were talking to F uh, Flo here, who it seems hates everything with a Y chromosome. So let's see if Drool is perhaps somewhat more positively disposed towards us. Yes, Captain. Tell me a little about yourself, Drool. My personal life is none of your business, sir. I'm just trying to create a friendly atmosphere here, Subcorporal. We may be together for a long while. Doubtful, sir. Uh, 
I guess not, then. How long have you served on Eureka, Subcorporal? Too long. As soon as my tour is up, I'm out of here. Why is that, Corporal? My career in Starcon hasn't exactly skyrocketed, sir. I rather hoped I wouldn't spend the last years of it in a, on a garbage cow. Well, maybe there's something I can do to help. Not likely, Captain. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get some, uh, some work to get back to. Yeah, I'm sure. What can I do to help you perform your job more efficiently? Stop pestering him, probably. <laughs> Stay out of my way, sir. Right. Well, that's going well. Um, well, we can use these buttons to talk to Cliffy uh, in the engineering section. Yarang! And we can give him orders and stuff. Ask him for status report, cloaked ship, decloaked ship, more power, or forget it. Ask for status report. All systems operational. And a else, Captain. Um, cloak the ship. Ha! That's a laugh. What do you want me to do, got the airlock and painted black? No, you could try. And a else, Captain. It appears we don't have a cloaking device, then why are these options here? More power! She cannot take much more of this, Captain. I've always wanted to say that. Anything else, Captain? Nope, that's about it. With alacrity, sir. Um, the orange button contacts the science section, except we don't have a science officer. The Eureka does not currently have a science officer. So that's a totally useless button, then. Okay, now we can also give commands to flow and drool. And, um... Basically, flow handles communication stuff, and drool handles nav and weapons. In this case, we want to hail Starcon so we can get permission to leave the uh, dock and get our orders as well. Hailing, sir! We are cleared for departure, Captain. We are ordered to proceed to Gangalaris, PU, and kiss your ass goodbye for refuse recovery missions. Refuse recovery, eh? Well, we are a garbage scout, so I guess that makes sense. Good, well, we know where we need to go now. We need to go to uh, Gangularis, P.U. and kiss your ass goodbye. I think you can fill in your own jokes there. So we need to tell Drool to lay in a course. What coordinates, Captain? And we need to give the coordinates, which you can find in the manual. This is a copy protection, actually. Well, first we want to go to Gangularis, which is 71552. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Now we can go to Lightspeed, which is curiously misspelled here, but anyway. The other options here have to do with shields, evasive action, status report, standard orbit, you know, standard stuff. What's the status report? Oh my gosh, she's going to blow, she's going to blow! Just kidding, sir. Doesn't anybody here take their job seriously? Does she have a status report? No. Oh yes, she does. Our last orders were to proceed to garbage pickups at Gangalars, P.U. and kiss your ass goodbye. Hey, that's, an, that's a useful status report. I didn't want that. Act busy. Okie dokie. <laughs> okay. That's completely pointless. I can't tell him to act, act busy. We can, however, go to light speed, which is what we actually should do. Firing inside space dock, probably not a good idea. Activate RRS is actually the refuse retrieval system, which we need to use when we need to pick up garbage. Anyway, let's go to light speed. 
We'll go to warp as soon as we're clear of the station, sir. That seems like a good idea. <clears throat> uh oh. What is it with androids trying to kill Roger? I like, by the way, the kill, fry, maim, crush thing in the, in the small display. Seems like we have another android on our tail, like in... Uh, in Space Quest 3, and it's a woman this time. This won't end well. I think you can talk to Flo while you're on our way somewhere, and then ask her... what she knows about the destination we're going to. What do you know about our destination, Flo? We're going to Gangalaris, sir. I hope you've had your shots. Well, we're not going to land there, so anyway. Does he have something to say? No, oh, we can ask him about the refuse recovery system. The refuse recovery system, or RRS for short, is the primary means by which the Hoover-class garbage cows perform their designated mission. The underlying system is relatively simple. A vacuumatic containment field works in con conjunction with tractor beams to suck up debris and space trash. After collection, refuse is moved into the Eureka's quantum garbage compactor, where it can be reduced for transport to a designated dumping zone. Wow, and I thought the floor scrubber in the academy was impressive. When we finish our mission, where's a good place to go for shore leave? That might be, uh, nice. Later? There aren't a lot of options open to us, Captain. The only place that's even halfway decent in this sector is the space bar. Wait a second, that's something on your keyboard. Maybe we'll have to check it out. You know, it's a bar, in space. I certainly hope we will, sir. How did you come to be posted to the Eureka? It's kind of a long story. Relax, there's plenty of time until the travel timer runs out. I was involved in a very unfortunate accident, sir. It was while I was serving on the SES Stupendous. Who names these ships? It was a mistake anyone could have made, really. I'm listening. We were patrolling the neutral zone when an unidentified ship suddenly popped up on our screen. So, naturally, I opened fire with everything we had. Naturally! She was blown to bits instantly. Unfortunately, it turned out to be one of our own robotic freighters. Wasn't this a question on the test? Imagine your embarrassment! Yeah, anyhow, after that I got canned and transferred to Eureka. What did you do, sir? You must have screwed up pretty bad to get stuck with a command like this. Or else ticked somebody off real good. I think it's the latter. I don't know. Well, come to think of it, probably the latter. Yes, we pissed off Quirk, of course. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Alright! Regular speed! Aye, sir. Hopefully that droid won't bother us. I like this outer spaceship, sounds like a car. I'm tracking a waste beacon, sir! Good! That's what we're here for, after all. Gonna pick up the waste, so activate the RRS. Aye, sir. And it sounds like a Hoover, as well. It's a garbage bag.
That has got to count as the most epic garbage pickup I've ever seen. Captain, I'm picking up a life form reading in the waste compartment. Captain, you better come down here. There are some strange scratching and whining noises coming out of that trash bin. What, did somebody throw away a bunch of kittens again? I hate it when that happens. Oh, well, I guess we'll have to check out what uh, we picked up in the next video. Welcome back. We've completed our first garbage pickup, and it seems there was something alive in there. We better check it out. Hopefully it's nothing dangerous. There's definitely something in there, Captain. Could be dangerous. You go first. Oh, you're real brave, aren't you, Cliffy? I can hear it. It's whining. Well, it doesn't sound like uh, a kitten. I guess we need to open the trash and figure out what it is. Man, a whole bunch of waste. Oh no, it's a face hugger! The hell? What the? Hey, he's a cute little bugger. I think I'll keep him. Yeah, sure, that's a good idea. I'll call him Spike, and I'll hug him and pet him and call him George. Hey, where are you going? Hey, where are you going, little fella? Fella? Well, I'm sure that won't cause any problems whatsoever. Um, that was as good a time as any, actually, to check out the toolbox. Let's take a look at all the junk in here. Cliffy's toolbox is filled with miscellaneous bits of junk and tools of every size, shape, and description. Let's see. It's one of those nifty, portable, handheld vacuums. You know, the kind that can't even pick up breadcrumbs. Well, that's pretty useless. We don't need that. This is Cliffy's tool of choice when he's working on the Eureka's delicate and temperamental electronic systems. This device is specially designed to cut through the shrink wrap on software packages. Oh, that's useful. Spare fuse. Well, you never know when we might blow a fuse, so let's take one with us. Thinking this might be a handy item, you take it with you. It's a pizza wheel cu to cut your... Uh, sorry, to cut your pizza pie. We don't need that. It has the appearance of a turkey baster. Wonder what Cliffy uses it for. I don't think I want to know. A Schmeer's brand crafts alien laser cutting torch. Oh, that sounds useful. It's a small drill. A whatchamacallit. It's a large drill. A hot glue gun. Great for a laugh on unsuspecting party guests. Yeah, because nothing livens up a party like third degree burn burns. And we can move some of the stuff around so we can look at what's underneath it. Wait, did we look at this? This, oh, that's the shrink wrap device. What's this thing, then? It's a hole punch. Heaven knows what Cliffy uses this for. Well, I bet he won't need it, but we will. I don't think you'll be able to wrench this tool away from Cliffy. Because it's a wrench, get it? Spark plug. We don't need, we don't need those. It's a doohickey. It's a Cliffy tool of choice, so I think we already read that one. Oh, it's a hammer, okay. <laughs> That makes sense. A space gizmo. A screwdriver. A high-tech thingamabob. Some of these descriptions really are inventive, aren't they? A pair of pliers. And... This appears to be a roll of anti-acid tablets. Oh, that could be useful. If we eat something, uh... That doesn't agree with us? Okay, let's put everything back. In order not to irk Cliffy, you put back the tools where you found them. And, uh, let's get out of here. Okay, well, I'm sure 
Oh, that's not what I meant. I want to go out the door. I'm sure Spike won't cause any trouble roaming around free like that. I mean, it's an uh, alien beastie of unknown origin, I'm sure. It won't uh, be dangerous or anything. Hey, thanks for leaving this mess back here for me to clean up. Real captain like a you. That little acid piddling beast in here turned loose his room and around, burning holes and everything. You better take care of him fast before he eats through the hull and kills us all. Oh, okay, I guess letting him roam free isn't such a good idea then. Better take care of it. Cut it out, this is a family game. I'm just trying to click on the door. It's not my fault that you interpret it as me clicking on myself. There he goes. Oh, he's burning holes in the deck. Not a good idea. Spike! Heal, boy! Heal! Yeah, I'm sure that'll work. A gaping hole has been eaten in the, de eaten in the deck. Let's see if we can find him somewhere. We haven't even been in here yet, so let's look around. This room serves the Eureka as both a transporter room and science lab. Needless to say, this has led to some interesting experiments by rambunctious crew members on past voyages. Uh huh. This computer is running a highly complex virtual reality program at the moment. Apparently it's Pong. Cliffy has rigged up a handy voice activation feature to the Eureka's transporter unit. Originally, he tried using a clapper, but after an embarrassing in accident involving a visiting alien diplomat and a dropped wrench, he opted for the current setup. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? This chamber houses the Eureka's cryogenic cooler. Cliffy uses it to keep his corona light chilled to a frosty 4 degrees Kelvin when it is not otherwise occupied. Now, I know faulting a Space Quest game on their scientific uh, accuracy is sort of a pointless thing, but it's for Kelvin. You don't use the word degrees when you're talking about Kelvin. A Habitude brand adaptive biological specimen container. Oh, that would be a useful place to put Spike in, I guess. Anything else in here? Not really. Okay, let's see if we can find Spike. Oh, there he comes. Look, he knows who his master is. How oh, nice. We have him with us now. Your faithful, but not completely house-trained companion, Spike. Well, I guess we should put them in the habitude. Where he can stay out of trouble. We can close the habitude. And he's leaving again. Heal, boy! Heal! I gotta find some way to calm him down. Uh-oh, he's eating more holes and stuff. Spike! Heal, boy! Heal! Yeah, it worked so well the first time you tried it. Captain, do something with that critter of yours. He's piddling great holes in my deck. That he is. Well, let's see if we can uh, catch him again the same way we did before. Yeah, he's falling forward again. Isn't that convenient? Okay, well, we do need to put him in the habitude, but apparently we need some way to calm him down. Well, since he appears to be acidic, maybe the way to uh, calm him down is with some of those anti-acid tablets we got. Poor little fellow must have eaten something that didn't agree with him. Those antacids should reduce the acidity of his metabolism. Hopefully. Well, he seems happy in there. 
Your little buddy is gurgling contentedly inside his habitat. Indeed he is. Alrighty then. Um, Cliffy, you want to work on fixing these holes? It's none other than Cliffy, your chief engineer. Cliffy is too engrossed in what he's doing to talk to you right now. Okay. Let's hope we can make it out the door without falling down that hole. Thanks for taking care of your critter, Captain. I finally managed to patch up the deck. Good. Um, well, in case you forget uh, what your uh, assignment is, you can ask Flo. Our last orders were to proceed to garbage pickups at Gangularis, PU, and kiss your ass goodbye. I don't think Flo has anything new to say. No. For drool. Um. So, next up we should go to P.U. Another nice sounding place. But I guess we'll do that in the next video. Welcome back. Well, uh, we've done all we can here at uh, Gangularis, so we should head to our next destination, which is P.U. I don't like going there. It stinks. So, Drool, lay in a course. What coordinates, Captain? Uh, coordinates for PU are... Uh, 9, 2, 7, 6, 7. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Good. Light speed. Aye, sir. And we can, of course, ask Flo again about our destination. We're going to PU. It's kind of a stinker of a planet. Well, what did you expect with that kind of name? I hope that Android doesn't catch up uh, with us. This is what life as a space captain is really like, you know? Just sitting in your chair. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Watching the view screen. Waiting until you get where you're supposed to be going. Okay, regular speed. Aye, sir. I'm tracking a waste beacon, sir. Good, that's what we're here for. Let's hope we don't pick up any more unwanted life forms. One cute critter is enough in uh, in this game, I think. Aye, sir. Let's just pick up the garbage. the second most epic garbage pickup I've ever seen. Captain, I'm intercepting a rather unusual message on Starcom Priority Frequency 2. I'm putting it on screen. Yeah, let's just eave eavesdrop on them. Maggot a dung heap. Come in, dung heap. Maggot a dung heap. Come in, dung heap. This is Dung Heap. What in the Pleiades are you doing on this frequency? 
We have a really hot load of goods that needs to be disposed of right away. I thought I told you never to call me here. Meet me at the usual place and we'll discuss it. Dung heap out. Here's a dynamics muck. Transmission terminated! And we got a sprint logo. I'm sorry, Captain, but I wasn't able to pin down the source of the transmission. And it seems something fishy's going on here. And of course, my uh, voice may have made it rather obvious who uh, this uh, weird creature was talking to. I wonder how they plan to deal with that particular problem in the actual voice version, had they ever made it. But in case uh, some of you uh, didn't figure out who it was yet, I won't tell you. And of course there's every chance that you haven't figured it out, because, well, my voice acting sucks. So anyway, let's see if we have anything to say about this. Sir? What do you make of that last transmission, uh, Flo? I don't know, sir. The content was really strange, especially since the Starcon command frequency was used. Indeed. Can you pin down the source? I'm afraid not, Captain. They were using a metamorphic coding algorithm and frequency hopping pretty rapidly. It was all I could do to stay with them during the transmission. How did you ever intercept... Never mind, I don't think I want to know. Seems that, uh... Flo is in a habit of eavesdropping on uh, Starcon command frequencies. Oh well, we might have uncovered a conspiracy, so... It's not a bad thing in this case. You're looking especially lovely today, Flo. I have a feeling that won't go over very well. You pig! What? Excuse me, you pig, sir. <laughs> right. I had a feeling she wouldn't appreciate uh, compliments. Well, our last orders, we know those, of course. Of course, Captain. Our last orders were to proceed to garbage pickups at Ganglers, PU, and Kizuras. Goodbye. Which means that next up, we need to go to Kizuras. Goodbye. Hopefully, when we're there, we won't have to kiss our ass goodbye. Let's see if, uh... Drool has anything to say. How does that message sound to you, Drool? Sounds to me like somebody was trying to unload a bunch of hot stereos, Captain. I think you misunderstood. Why would anyone in Starcon do something like that? I haven't the faintest idea, sir. What's with Flo? Why is she so bitter toward me? That's a good question. I think she's just generally ill-disposed. Don't take it personally, sir. Flo recently separated from her 18th husband and is understandably distraught. She's kind of down on men in general. Wow, an 18-time loser. Wanna make something of it, flyboy? I've divorced better men than you. See what I mean. Eighteen husbands? And why do I have the feeling they all ended up chopped up in a freezer? I was just wondering, what's it like not having a mouth? Excuse me? I mean, how do you eat? And how do you kiss? Do you vibrate those gill thingies or rub your bulbous eyeballs together or something? Not everybody keeps their elementary orifices in the same place, Captain. I believe that's a reference to uh, Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, where Martia informed Kirk that not everybody keeps their genitals in the same place. It is a good point, though, especially since we're gonna go to a bar later. How, how does he drink? <laughs> but not exactly tactful of Roger to uh, 
approach a subject like that. Okay, well, I think uh, that's just about all we can do here. We didn't pick up any life forms and no sign of the android so far. So, let's uh, head to our final destination. Kiss your ass goodbye. <coughs> Which I believe is uh, coordinates 20011. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Alright. Light speed. Aye, sir. Off we go again. Let's see what uh, Flo has to say about this place. Oh, nothing. I can't choose it. Really? Ah, oh, I wanted to know what she had to say about some place called Kiss Your Ass Goodbye, but I can't. Oh well, I guess we'll have to make up our own mind once we get there. Man, I wish I had a Game Boy or something. Would have made. What the hell? What was that? Good question. We've been hit by a proton torpedo. Uh oh. A tractor beam is locked on us, Captain. We're being pulled in. But by whom? Get us out of here, Drool. Helm not responding, sir. Weapon systems inoperative. Uh-oh. Looks like we're in deep shit. Alert! Warning! Uh-oh! We're being healed, sir! I'm putting it on screen! It's that android! Roger Wilco, under the authority of ERGS, Extensively Revised Collect Institute 2564.45, Chapter 4123, Subparagraph something, I hereby command you to beam down and surrender your person for arrest. Failure to comply with these instructions will result in the destruction of your ship and everyone on board. Looks like the Jepazoid Novelty Company still hasn't forgotten about that little piece of mill fraud you pulled on them back in Space Quest 2. You mean the one with the free mating call whistle? I thought all this was over with after I had that running with Arnoid on the planet Fleabot a few years back. You thought wrong, human. It just goes to show. Never send a mandroid to do a womanoid's work. Can't we come to some kind of arrangement? Beam down to the planet. Your body will be disassembled and sold to various biotechnology firms to pay interest and collection fees. I'm scanning your ship. Any attempt to at escape or subterfuge will result in the immediate annihilation of your ship and crew. You have five standard time units before I destroy your ship, Roger Wilco. I think she means business captain. Sounds like it. I agree, and could you hurry up and beam down, sir, before she gets impatient and blows us all up? Oh gee, thanks for your concern for my well-being. Crisis situation! But we'll have to deal with it in the next video. Welcome back. We are under attack by the uh, android, whom I believe is actually called WD-40. Yes, after the lubricant. And she's after us for the same reason Arnold was in Space Quest 3. The Chipazoid Novelty Company still seems to be under the belief that we didn't pay for that whistle, even though it was free. Well, maybe it was posters and backing or something. I don't know. In any case, I don't think she's gonna listen to reason. And we have five standard time units to comply with her order to beam down, and if we don't, she, uh, blows us to smithereens. So, I guess we'd better do what she said. Or, see if somebody else has an idea to get us out of here. 
Shouldn't you be going now, sir? I'll make sure your family is notified should anything unfortunate happen. Uh, yeah, make sure you tell my uh, future wife and son. I don't think Roger has any other family. I don't feel like chatting at the moment, sir. Well, being in mortal danger can do that to you. Well, you can try whatever you want here, but nothing's gonna work except, well, what uh, she told us to do, which is beam down. Now, I think the Starcon aptitude test had a thing or two to say about the situation. First, it had something to say about beaming down, where they said you had to scan the planet first, but uh, we can't actually do that right now. But it also had some, uh, some questions about dealing with a killer android being on your tail. Well, she's not getting to m going to get me without a fight. Whatever you say, sir. They have been nice knowing ya. Okay. Thanks for the uh, vote of confidence there. Okay, uh, Cliffy is undisturbed by the whole thing. Captain, that torpedo knocked out our warp drive. What a sitting duck for whoever that is out there. By the way, why did they shoot at us? An Annihilator android is after me for something I did a long, long time ago, Cliffy. She's threatening to blow the ship up if I don't beam down to the surface. What'd you do, sir? And Hill? What? <laughs> no, nothing like that. I ordered something through the mail and I forgot to pay for it. Mail fraud is a very serious crime, Captain. I wish you luck. Gee, everybody's being so supportive. And I keep trying to tell people we didn't actually commit mail fraud. Fraud. Even. Oh, well, we have to beam down, uh, which we haven't done before, but um, when we looked at the transporter, it said it had a voice activation circuit, so all we need to do to beam down is talk to it. Well, command it, actually, using the command icon. I'm actually going to save before I beam down, because this is a dangerous situation. Energize. Okay. There we are. Meanwhile, back in Space Quest 12. Oh, wait, sorry. Wrong game. Uh huh. Our android friend is touching down. Ooh, she can cloak her entire ship. I bet she can cloak as well, which is not good for our health. Let's take a look around. A lovely pond is formed by a waterfall. The scene would be idyllic if you weren't being haunted by a killer android. A babbling waterfall splashes noisily into a pool at the base of the imposing granite cliffs. This area reminds you of the decor of a resort on Eroticon 6, where you once vacationed. All that's missing are six bathing beauties and a tube of crazy glue. What would you do with a tube of crazy glue? I don't think I want to know. This fern ap appears in Space Quest V, courtesy of Cosmos Galaxy Garden Supply Store. Next to the big buckazoids, a certain faceless corporate entity who shall remain nameless shelled out. Sorry, I'm reading this in the wrong intonation. Next to the big... Oh, not helping. Next to the big buckazoids, a certain faceless corporate entity who shall remain sh uh, nameless shelled out. Cosmos' contribution isn't much, but what the heck, at least it's beer money. Of course, they're talking about Sprint, who are actually the uh, company that shelled out here. The large tree is unremarkable in size, shape, 
or appearance. Oh, no message for the other waterfall. Okay, I guess standing here in the open isn't going to improve our health. So let's uh, see if we can take shelter or something. Uh oh. Aha! There you are! See if you can outrun my energy bolts of death, broom jockey! Oops. They're outrunning them isn't that hard as long as you keep moving. Phew, that was too close. You'd better keep moving, Raj. That WD-40 android won't give up till your smoldering pile of hero salsa. And the fact that she has a cloaking that she has cloaking capabilities only makes matters worse. I wouldn't give a tin buckazoid for your life right now, Raj. Right, um... Let's see... I'm gonna save again. Oh, why did I save it as W80? That's a typo. Should be 40, of course. Okay, I think this screen is relatively safe. This shady little alcove looks like it would be a nice place to stop, pitch a tent, and camp out for a while. If only you weren't running for your life at the moment. A small tree struggles to grow on the steep cliff face. A hardy fern clings tenaciously to the rock face. Peering into the dark interior of this cave, you can just make out that it seems to climb upward. This cave appears to angle downward. Yes, of course, because we came from it. Um, well, let's see, the Stark on Aptitude tests had something to say about um, being chased by a killer android. And the correct answer, at least according to the guy we cheated from, was apparently to drop a rock on her and shout hasta la vista, baby. So I guess that should be our uh, mode of operation. Let's check to the right. Hmm. Interesting. We have a pond and a pool. The pond would be good for you. The pool wouldn't be? You find yourself on a rocky ledge, looking out into a beautiful yet dangerous canyon. Waterfalls cascade down the rock, outcropping to a large pool at the base of the canyon. A tree grows precariously from the rock ledge, its branches reaching out into the canyon over a small pool. Banana-like fruit clusters grow from several of the trees in this area. Wait, wasn't one of the other options on that question... Uh, on the SAT test to, stu uh, to stuff a banana up her exhaust? Could be a backup plan? Maybe we can get to those bananas. They seem to be at the end of the branch there. No! Oh, well that didn't end well. Well, at least it doesn't appear to have killed us. And it appears we have a branch now. Although I sincerely doubt that hitting her with a stick is going to do much good. Well, I guess the banana plant is out. Oh, there she is again. But we have a stick. Could be useful. Who knows? Let us, uh, no, not restore. Let us save. Again? And see what's up here now. This would be quite a nice planet. If only we weren't chased. Wow, what a view. The beauty of this picturesque scene causes you to forget for a brief instant that you are being stalked by a killer android who would like nothing better than to wear your gizzard as a bow tie. Hmm. Well, before she can do that, we'll uh, continue in the next video. Welcome back. We've arrived at another scenic viewpoint. If only Roger brought a camera.
Wait, what am I saying? I'm recording the whole thing. A cool mountain pool collects the downspout of water from the falls. Carrying runoff from the melting glaciers, these waterfalls drain the peaks of the eponymous mountain range. Cascading downwards, these picturesque falls drain the small pool. The larch. I guess. The, uh, uh, that's, that's the default message. The mouth of, this, of a small cave is partially hidden from view by the waterfall. This cave angles steeply downward. I think the other one might go up here. The cavernous mouth of this tunnel opens downward. Oh, how can you see that from here? Peering into the dim interior of this cave, you can barely make out that it seems to angle downward. A large boulder is balanced precariously on top of this cliff. Okay, let's see if we can go up. Uh oh, there she is again. Better keep moving. Oh, looks like she's following us through the water and up into the cave. We're trapped. There's nothing left to do but jump. Oh, well, there's a boulder up there, and you know what the SAT test said? No. Oh, damn it. That's the annoying thing here. You don't want to go there. You want to go up there, but it is rather touchy. And I apparently didn't click, right? But you want to go up there when she's following you. Oh, I need to go back. Get her to follow us again. There she comes. And instead of, you know, being smart and going to the other end of the cave, which is clearly visible from where she was, she follows us again. Good thing we can make this jump. Alright. Now let's use that stick we got to pry loose this boulder. And hasta la vista, baby! Steve, you're right! Looks like you bowled her over with your ingenu ingenuity, Rog. Rog, sorry. She's cooling her jets at the bottom of that pool below. Nice work. Indeed, not bad for a former janitor. Although he, he did forget to shout hasta la vista, baby. That's gonna cost him style points. Uh, let's go down this side. And I believe we can actually go over here somehow. Or not. I thought you could get there some. I don't, I don't remember what that's connected to. Uh, I guess we'll go back this way. Okay, now we know actually that she is uh, cooling down in the pool down there. And we want to check that out. But first I want to go here, because now that she's not after us, we can cross this. Uh, that's nice. This large hollow log is about the same diameter as Roger's body. Looks like it might be time to start an exercise program. Because, you know, even if we uh, don't need them for the android, I still want to get some of the bananas. This fruit cluster is far, far beyond your reach. 
Well, maybe we can use a stick. That sends it swinging. Oh. There we go. You managed to grab one of the pieces of fruit and liberate it from the swinging cluster. Then, shoving it into your pocket, you add to the increasingly impressive bolt in your uniform. Yeah, considering all the stuff we're carrying around... Well, it's not even that much yet. This exotic, vaguely banana-like fruit grows only here on Kishore Azkabai. Okay, I wanna know where this goes. Oh, right, here. The sky is blue, and the air as fresh as a Martian daisy. Are they fresh? I don't know. This wind-swept crag juts out eastward over the mountain, mountainous terrain of Kijarazgabai. Sunlight shimmers off a small rocky plateau near the eastern edge of this picturesque scene. Well, we know that this... Hey, great location for a Jeep commercial. <laughs> Well, we know that this is actually where the uh, the android ship was parked, but I don't think we can make this particular jump. So we better head down to where uh, we sent her with the rock, which I believe is the lower pool where we started. See if we took care of her. Ooh, well, something happened. By stretching your limited ingenuity to the fullest, you've managed to knock out WD-40's cloaking mechanism. The downside is, now she's really ticked off. That's not a good thing. We need to find a place to hide! And we're out of boulders. You know, I think if Roger had just followed the, the instructions properly and shouted hasta la vista baby, we would have been fine. But no, he forgot that part. Let's see, well we found a nice hiding place. Here! In the tree! And there she comes. I know you're here somewhere, Wilco. Come out and face me like a woman. I'm not a woman. It's your destiny. No, I'll never join you. Wait. Uh, also, despite the fact that we crossed as dressed in Space Quest 4, still not a woman. Well, let's execute plan B. Proves that the SAT test, or at least the guy we cheated from, was wrong. Stick a banana up its exhaust pipe. That'll take care of her. Whee! We blow her up good. Kee haw! A round metallic object. I'm guessing it's part of our former Annihilator android. So, let's pick it up. Ooh, it's her head. The metal head from the Annihilator android WD-40. Never know when we might need to get a head. Let's see where the rest of her ended up. Like right here. Hey, Cliffy. And he's beckoning us. Now you beam down. <laughs> Gee, thanks for all the help. Hey, Captain. Well, I'll be. We are still in one piece. Don't sound so surprised. This ship's scanners picked up a large explosion, and we drew lots to see who got to come down and collect your remains. And you lost. Nope, I won. But I'm relieved to see you anyway, sir. 
will be, it will save a lot of uncomfortable explanations back at StarCon. I see you got the robot's hat there, sir. I've been looking for it. Now I'll beam you back to that ship and then finish picking up the pieces down here. Alrighty. That's nice. <coughs> and, um... Let's uh, just see. I think uh, we survived this, at the very least. And... That's the most important part. But we'll continue in the next video. Welcome back! Miraculously, Roger has survived yet another encounter with an Annihilator android. And we blew her up using the wrong answer from the SAT test. I still think Roger would have gotten away with just dropping the boulder if he'd just remembered to shout out to La Vista Baby. It was the key ingredient of that plan. Okay, well, uh, let's head back to the bridge. That was a weird animation. You think you heard Cliffy beaming in? It might be a good idea to give him that android head. Oh. Well, I guess that means we're heading straight back. Hey Cliffy, I have something for you! Boink. I just wanted you to get ahead! <laughs> your sense of humor is surpassed only by your captain's skill, sir. Here, I have something you might be interested in. I was putting this WD-40 unit back together, and I had a couple of pieces left over. Thought you might like a souvenir. Here you go. What, is he putting together IKEA furniture? Thanks, I guess. I always have parts left over if I do that. Why are you putting her back together? She tried to kill me! WD-40 doesn't appear to be functioning right now. She'll probably make a great science officer once Cliffy gets her up and running, provided she doesn't try to kill you first. Oh, that's right, we needed a science officer. Cliffy's hard at work repairing the android. I'm sure you won't mind us interrupting him. Cliffy is too engrossed in what he's doing to talk to you. Uh, oh, no, I wanted to look at the thing Cliffy gave us. A leftover part from Cliffy's overhaul of WD-40, the Annihilator Android. Hmm. Um, I'm not entirely sure if there's anything you can talk to uh, Flo and Drool about at this point, so I'm going to check. And, of course, they're goofing off, as always. <coughs> Let's see. Um, now we get a... <laughs> we don't have a destination right now, so that's not an option. Nope. Nothing. Anyway, I want to figure out what this uh, thing that Cliffy gave us does. Let's see. Can we use it? That's not something you need to do. Can we give it back to Cliffy? No. Yeah, sure, Captain. I'll get right on it. Doesn't matter what we order, that's his response. Uh, well, it sort of looks like a remote control or something. Maybe it has something to do with the ship. It would be nice if we could find that ship. It might hold something interesting. 
So that means we need to go back down to the planet. Energize! Wait up, Captain, I'll go with ya. Apparently the voice activated in the transporter is smart enough to, uh, to realize that we have to wait for Cliffy. Hey! Why'd we beam in here? I wonder if this little device has anything to do with it. Wait a second, is this the place where... You don't have time to go wandering all over the planet, you need the cloaking device. Oh, is that why we're here? Um... Uh, okay, we want the cloaking device, but... And this appears to be the location where the ship is, was put down, but we can't see it, of course. You can't see WD-40 ship, but your razor-sharp intellect tells you it must be around here somewhere. The rock plateau supports the massive weight of WD-40 ship. Apparently we want to have the cloaking device. And why not? I mean, that could, could come in handy later. Stop scratching your armpits, Cliffy. Your yeah, sure this is where she parked her ship, Captain. Kinda unstable. It's gotta be here somewhere, Cliffy. I know it is. Maybe if I look around a bit, we'll bump into it. Literally, I think. Let's see... Youch! Hey! What gives? This must be the cloaked ship of that killer android. Neat. I think that's probably one of the landing legs. <laughs> Go on without me, Captain. I'm not gonna make it. <laughs> okay. Way to make me look good, uh, Cliffy. All right. Let's see what the uh, what this gizmo does, if anything. Ooh, it opens the access bay. We can get into the ship. Hmm. Interesting looking ship. WD-40 ship has a spartan and totally utilitarian interior, indicative of the single-mindedness with which the ship's pilot formerly pursued her victims. This baby is probably raked with all sorts of lethally effective security devices. Hmm. This electronic hatch mechanism for the ship is manufactured by the Underhead Door Company on Beta Omicron. Okay. The lovely environments of Kijarazgabai are visible through the viewport of WD-40 ships. The design of the ship's cockpit utilizes an unconventional layout and has a vaguely menacing feel about it. Oh, well, I'm sure we don't need to worry about those security devices. I'm betting the uh, narrator is just exaggerating. So let's see if we can get into the cockpit and find the cloaking device or something. Oh, oops. That wasn't supposed to happen. Zoe, the electromatic security system has reduced you to a stick of hero jerky. Um. Uh, well, that didn't end well. Let's see, anything else here? High-tech thingamajig. And another high-tech thingamajig. A computer screen above your head displays indecipherable information of some kind. You have a sneaking suspicion that it might be important, but no means whatsoever to discern its nature. Hmm, let's see, anything else here? This panel is totally inconspicuous. The very nondescript nature of this panel, which doesn't set it apart from anything else in the ship, piques your interest. Why? I don't know. But let's take a look at it anyway. Aha! This must be where the cloaking device is housed. It's some sort of locking mechanism, and this should be easy to crack open. Sure, why not? Locks usually are. This object bears a remarkable resemblance to a cloaking device. 
This would seem to be a latch of some kind. That too. A quarter of a turn handles are set into... What? A, qu a quarter of turn handles are set into a mechanism that holds the ship floating device securely in place. I don't think that sentence is correct without the A there. This looks like an access panel of some kind. Well, can we open it? The panel won't budge. Uh-oh. It appears that you have triggered some sort of alarm. Better get this thing and get out of here fast. Oops. I have no idea how long that time limit is. Let's try the latch. Well, that works. What is that? Neat. Can we open the panel now? No. We can rotate these things. Ooh, now this one opens. And so does this one. But these two do not. How about now? Oh, that one does. There we go. That was easy. Good job. Now get out of here. That might be a good idea. Because that alarm does not fill me with confidence. I got it! Let's move before this thing blows! Ooh, spectacular. Ouch! Oh, wow, Chief, that I hurt. That looked real painful. You okay? Fine! Perfect! Now help me up! Sure thing. Here you go. I'll get around to installing this device as soon as I finish my repairs to the Android. Are you sure that fixing her is a good idea, Cliffy? I'm still not sold on the whole plan. Trust me, sir. Just because you, had, you two have a slight misunderstanding, there's no reason she can't become a valuable member of the crew. Um, sure? Slight misunderstanding? Cliffy, she tried to kill me! Well, there is that, but I'm pretty sure I can crank down her lethality setting a couple notches. Afterwards, she'll probably just want to beat you severely. I don't like that idea. That's not going to cut it, Cliffy. I suppose you're right, sir. It's probably kind of hard to captain a ship if you've been beaten senseless. But I do think it will help to keep you on your toes if she took a random swing at you now and again. No fucking way. I don't want her to so much as scowl at me, Cliffy. All right, sir. Have it your way. Right. I guess we can trust him. Why does nobody on this crew like me? Oh well. At least we got a cloaking device and a future science officer. Once uh, Cliffy finis finishes installing and... Uh, fixing them, respectively, and we'll continue in the next video. Welcome back. We have picked up the remains of WD-40, and we also got her cloaking device, which uh, could come in handy, I suppose. Uh, we need to figure out what else we can do. Because we finished our orders. This was the last planet we were ordered to go to. So, what do we do next? That is a good question. I guess maybe some R&R might be in order. Um... I wonder what she says at this point. We finished our mission, Captain! Let's take some R&R at the space bar! Well, she agrees with the R&R &R idea. And... Well, we already talked to him about where we could go to shore leave earlier, so... I guess that's fine. Let's see if... Uh, if Cliffy has finished the science officer thing. No. Seems like WD-40 has not yet been put uh, back together. When she has been, we can contact her here via the science officer button. Ask her for advice and stuff. Alright, well, it seems that we uh, should go get some shore leave at the space bar. It's a bar, except it's in space. 
It's also a key on a keyboard. So, let's uh, lay in a course to the space bar. You know, Captain, I could really use a break. How about heading to the space bar for a quick drink? I was already planning to do that. So, uh, let's do that. That is 69869. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Okay. Light speed. Aye, sir. And hurry it up, will ya? I'm thirsty. It makes perfect sense, of course, that the spaceship going to warp would sound like a car driving off. It's just as logical as the jet aircraft in an airplane that sounds like a... like a, a propeller plane. Let's ask her about the space bar. What do you know about our destination, Flo? The space bar is a great place to hang out, Captain! Well, that wasn't very informative. Better than nothing, I guess. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Good. Regular speed. Aye, sir. We didn't pick up any garbage at uh, Kijaraskabai. I'm sure no one will mind. There's the space bar. Go into the standard orbit, even though I don't see how you can actually orbit a space station. Don't think it would be massive enough for that, but anyway. Standard orbit, I. And they're off. Let's party. Last one down to the station is a rotten ore at Oven. <laughs> Why do I have the feeling it's gonna be me? Okay. Let's head down to the space bar. And, you know, I think Spike could really use, uh... Yep, I'm the rotten or at Ovum. Or WD-40, except I don't think she's coming. I think Spike could really use some R&R &R as well. He's been cooped up in the, his habitat for so long now. Let's just take him uh, with us. Can we close the habitat? I don't know if that serves purpose, but... It is apparently possible. Energize. <coughs> Alright, let's see what the space bar place is like. Ooh, retro. Excuse me, Captain. Well, I see an old buddy up mine over there by the bar. Uh oh, here we go again. Wait, do you know something we don't rule? Gee, another Sprint logo. With Sprint long distance teleportation systems, you're as good as there. Huge lava lamp is the capstone to the retro decor of this star confederacy watering hole known simply as the Space Bar by its clientele. The Nova Station is home to this collectively infamous Space Bar and is the main port of call for ships on Liberty in the G6 Quadrant. Oh, that's the same message as before. Your chief engineer is having a drink with a member of the Goliath's crew. Hey, the Goliath? That's Quirk's ship. Is he here? Hey! Yes, he is. Up there. Along with the alien we saw on the view screen. Of course, if you recognized what voice I did, then you already knew it was Quirk he was talking to. Anyway. What? We can't look at him. 
This alien looks vaguely familiar. Oh, there we go. Captain Quirk is sharing a drink with a familiar looking alien. Very suspicious. A scruffy looking space trader is deeply involved with a double Andromeda at the bar. Okay, how about this guy? The last time you saw a creature with a mouth that looked like this, it had a big hook in it. I guess that means he looks like a fish or something. He has a drink with an umbrella in it. How nice! That looks like Flo and Drool are sitting over there. Really? No message? Nothing? Alright, we'll just sit down with them. It's a robot. Hello, I am your cocktail waitress analog. Bzz. What is your poison, humanoids? I'll have a double bour bourbon on the rocks. I'll have a fuzzy nostril! Give me a green goblin. Here are your drinks. The charges will be deducted from your StarCon account. If you feel the urge to hurl, please feel free to use the restrooms, humans. Hey, I'm the only human at this table. Racist. Well, that's quick service, at least. Must have a built-in transporter or something, or a replicator. I don't know if replicators exist in Space Coast Universe. Ooh, that's scruffy luck looking dude is coming over. Hello there, suck- uh, I mean, partner! May I have a moment? Well, actually, I'm kinda... Allow me to introduce myself. The name's Nilo Jones, Merchant of Venus. Dealer in fine collectibles, trafficker in rare artif artifacts, What's your moniker, son? I'm, uh, Roger Wilco. Well, Wilco, this is your lucky day. Really? I could tell the first minute I set eyes on you that you're a discerning individual, individual with an IQ significantly higher than the chair he was sitting in. Well, just barely. A man who knows the value of fine merchandise when he sees it. If he sees it. Well, uh... I hate this, these kind of guys. Never fear, Wilco! Nilo can fix you right up! Need some Antarian firewater? A few grey marker copies of the latest Finks Quest game? Or a lucky Tribble's foot? How about some Chernobyl cufflinks? They're a great collector's item, you know! Guaranteed to give you that warm glow like only hard radiation can! That doesn't sound safe. I don't think... Well, that's an accurate description of Roger. I can see you're looking for something special, Roger. Can I call you Roger? Well, I've got just the thing. Dehydrated space monkeys! They're all the rage in the colony worlds. You don't have to feed them, and there's no mess. For you, 15 buckazoids. I'm not sure... You drive hard bargain, Rog. I tell you what, you take a free sample of space monkeys in my business cart with my compliments. Then you buy something for your lady friend the next time you pass through here. Uh, thanks. Realizing he's not going to make a big score here, the sales beast moves, moves off to find another victim. <sighs> I thought he'd never leave. Hey, Quirk and the alien are getting up. And he sort of ambles away. <laughs> I like the way Quirk uh, walks. He's sort of a, a pre-cursor uh, to Zap Brannigan, isn't he? Well, 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 look who it isn't. Buzz off, laser brain. That's no way to talk to your superiors, uh, Wilco. Enjoying your new command, Trash Man? I recommended you for the job. That's sanitation engineer to you, Crumb. Ooh, an aristocrat. I bet Ambassador Wankmeister would be really impressed. 
she and I are having a great time working together closely on the Goliath. Quirk, you have the looks of an Orat and the manners to match. Why, you little... I could have you brought up on chargers for that. I demand satisfaction. I challenge you to a game of Bell Cruiser, wimp. Fine, I'm going to kick your aft side into the next quadrant, Quirk. Huh, we'll see about that, broom jockey. And we follow him upstairs to a game of Battle Cruiser. Which is basically like uh, battleships. And the directions are kind of long and there's no f no really funny stuff in there, so I'm not going to read those. I'm just going to play. And the first thing we need to do is place our ships. Like I said, it basically works like, uh, like battleships. And you have four ships, which you must play in one of three sectors. Um, this is the space station. Let's see, I'll place it here. This is a small ship. You can also rotate them. Place them in a different orientation. But I think I'll place that one there. I always leave, uh, like to leave at least one sector completely empty. And... This one, I'm gonna place it... Here? And... This one, the biggest ship... I'm going to place that... Um, no, not there, I'm gonna place it... Here. I really have no idea if that's a good placement or not. Uh, <laughs> okay, now we're done, we can get started. And it seems that we have the first turn. We can fire either a weapon or a probe, which reveals um, an area of 5x5, five five, but doesn't do any damage. But we have only two probes. So, you want to be uh, careful with those. But we'll continue in the next video. Welcome back! Captain Quirk has challenged us to a game of Space Battle Cruiser, or whatever. And it's basically the same as Battleship. So, we just need to shoot and hope we find his ships, which are hidden. You can also use probes, um, which reveal a larger area, but since you only have two of them, they're not that useful. You get more of them if you destroy some of his ships. They're mostly useful if, you, um, if you've if you already found a ship and then, shoot, uh, and then shoot a probe to see what ship it is, so you don't need to uh, waste time guessing that. Okay, um, let's see. I go first. Where am I going to shoot? I'm going to shoot here. Wow! <laughs> that was a lucky shot. And he missed! Okay. Oh, I got really lucky there, so... We gotta find out how this ship is oriented and which ship it is. I suppose I could use a probe for that. But I've got a good feeling about this square. I'm right again! And I'm good at this game. Ha! Ah, you can shoot in Sector 2 all you want, there's nothing there! Um, well, most of the ships have a straight uh, bit of 3 in them, so it'll be either here or there. Oh, and it was his small ship! Man, 3 shots, 3 hits! What are the odds? My scout ship! Quirk is not uh, so lucky. Um, let's try another sector. I'm gonna shoot sector two. Um, here. Wow! Man, am I good or what? Ooh, he just shot in between them. Um, over here. 
are doing nothing. Ha ha. Mm, let's use this divination technique that I've been using so far. And it tells me... Here. Wow. Right again. I must be psychic. How about this square? He's not hitting anything, which is good for me. And... Now this could still either be the uh, cruiser, which would be there, or it could be the uh, space station, which would be there. And I think it's there. Wow! Right again! Okay, it should be <laughs> pretty obvious by now that I'm cheating. My starbase... Arr! The thing I did here um, is basically you can play the game once or just shoot probes wherever you want and then restore back to the beginning of the game. The changement of the ships doesn't uh, plan. You can actually uh, doesn't change. You can actually save even during the game, which uh, is pretty much the only uh, way I'm gonna save here now. Uh, Bell cruiser. It's pretty much the only way you're ever going to get this with 100 points by save scumming, because there's no way you can play this normally and not have him uh, destroy at least one of your ships. It's still, even with this method, it's still going to be extremely doubtful whether we'll make it to the end with all of our ships intact. Okay, well, I don't need to pretend to, uh, anymore that I'm actually shooting at random. And he has hidden his cruiser over there, I believe. Good, as long as he keeps missing. Ooh, oh, I, he hit. That's a problem. And I'm going to restore because, of, uh, because we still have too many shots left to destroy his two remaining ships and he'll be able to destroy that one, and I really want to make it to the end of the game with full points, because this is a Let's Play, and I like having my Let's Plays end with full points. And we weren't able to do it in... Uh, in uh, Space Quest 4, so I really want to do it here. Otherwise, I would normally be opposed to cheating. But since there really is no other way to do this, if you want all the points... Good, he's missing now. I don't think he really has much of a strategy, he's mostly random. That's also why I'm not using probes, because um, although I would like to show you them, they waste shots! And the quicker we're done, the less chance he has of destroying one of ours. Good. You destroyed my destroyer, punk. Indeed I did. That um, seems to be a good occasion to save again. And we have only one ship left, his uh, flagship. Which is in Sector 3. Should be here. Good. Well, this gives us a fairly good chance that we'll make it. Unless he happens to hit the uh, scout ship, the smallest one. Because then he still has a, a, a chance of destroying it before uh, we destroy all of his. The other reason why I'm doing it this way is because these games can actually take rather long. And then I just have to speed them up anyway to prevent you from getting bored with the video. This way, we do it nice and quick. 
Well, we've got only two shots left um, to take out his ship. And that means he cannot possibly destroy one of our ships. So let's use the probe so you can see what that looks like. Oh. Uh, we'll fire it here. And it will reveal where the ship is, but it doesn't do any damage. Of course, we already knew this. <laughs> I already knew this, anyway. It could have uh, still been on the uh, other side if you were actually playing this fairly, which I'm not. There we go! We won! Okay, we cheated the hell out of it, but still! Blast you! You nailed my large bell cruiser, you weed! I won! I won! <laughs> yeah, you cheated, Roger. Okay, I cheated. What the hell's going on here? Why ya dirty no good? Cliffy, stop that! This isn't gonna end well. What's going on here, Cliffy? Captain, that slug big crewman from the Goliath called our ship a garbage scow. I just couldn't sit there alone and get away with it. Cliffy, the Eureka is a garbage scow. Oh yeah, I forgot. But you didn't have to go rubbing our noses in it. I've heard enough. Guards, place this man under arrest and toss him in the brig. Wait a minute, Quirk. You can't just... I can and did. Now just stow it, Wilco, or you'll end up alongside him in a detention cell. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to get back to my ship. I wouldn't want to keep the ambassador waiting. You're just a sore loser, Quirk. That's what this is about, isn't it? You just can't take the fact that I beat you by cheating. Well, that's not a good thing. Uh huh. Well, let's see if we can't break him out of there. Let's see where they uh, took him. Maybe we can just ask them to uh, let him go, and they'll they'll be fine, probably. Achtung! Verboten! Wait, did they hire Germans to, uh... <laughs> to guard the cells? And then, by the way, it's Achtung. It's spelled with C-H. I guess this is a detention area. I know what we have to do. We have to get a Wookiee. Pretend we are bringing it here, and then it can escape to create a diversion! Wait, where are we gonna find a Wookiee? I guess we'll have to come up with something else, but we'll have to do that in the next video. Welcome back! Cliffy has been thrown into jail. And... I believe that that scene is actually a reference to the classic Star Trek episodes, The Trouble with Tribbles, where Scotty starts a bar fight with some Klingons after they call the Enterprise a garbage scow. And then even go uh, even further and claim that the Enterprise is garbage. Of course, the difference here is, as Roger rightly pointed out, that the Eureka is a garbage scow, but apparently Cliffy does not like to be reminded of that fact. Anyway, since apparently Starcon does not believe in due process, it's up to us to break him out. Unfortunately, there's some guards here. Well, maybe if we ask them nicely, they'll let uh, Cliffy out. At last, Pinhead! They're, ni they're as nice as the people at the Academy. Did your mother have any children who lived? Yeah, me. A variety of controls, including those for the force field, are operated from this console. I was actually trying to look at the guy, but anyway. 
The security guard has recently undergone sensitivity training and now likes to read his victims' poetry before beating them unconscious. My god, the horror! Starcon security police are normally irritable, surly and generally of poor disposition. Except on those rare occasions they feel something is important enough to get really angry about it. This area of the space station houses space bar patrons whose recreational activities go beyond accepted standards of polite society. Indeed, this cell appears to be as empty as the orb atop your shoulders. Impressive that he can see it from there. Unlike the other detention cell, this one seems to be occupied. Maybe that's uh, Cliffy in there? Well, let's see if we can get to him. I'm sure those guards won't stand in our way. No! But this force field might! Ha ha! Uh, sorry about that, Joyce. I just now uh, turned the force field off. Go on in. Okay, how nice of them. No! Ha! <laughs> what a dweeb! I can't believe you fell for the old shut off the power trick. Ha <laughs> ha! You aren't nice. Scram, Pee Wee. Okay, I guess we need to uh, find a way to get them away from here. Like, create a diversion or something. What do we have that could create a diversion? Spike? Nah. We could hit them with a stick or throw a hole punch at them. Uh, well, we did have these uh, these space monkeys that we got from the, the merchant earlier. A package of dehydrated space monkeys given to you by the sales beast at the space bar. A small label at the bottom reads, Warning! Do not allow contents of package to mix with alcohol. Well, I'm guessing that if we uh, do mix it them with alcohol, the results might be entertaining and maybe enough to provide it the distraction we need. We also have his business card. But that's not useful right now, so let's uh, <coughs> throw some monkeys into some alcohol, I guess. Uh, maybe uh, flow and drool of some useful things to say about the situation. Did you notice the alien sitting with Quirk in the upper booth when we came in, Captain? Yes, I did, actually. What about him? Well, I have an excellent memory for cranial configurations, and I'd swear it was the same creature we saw in that transmission we intercepted. Yes. What do you suppose it was doing with Quirk? I haven't any idea. idea. Uh, what do you think, Drool? Beats me. I didn't even see the guy when we came in. Okay. Nothing to say about Cliffy? Geez, your concern for your fellow crew members is really, uh... big, isn't it, Flo? Well, then again, Cliffy is a man, so he's got that going against him. Uh, from her point of view, anyway. Why did you say, uh-oh, here we go again, when we came into the bar? Cliffy had a slight misunderstanding with a crew member from the Intrapid the last time we came in here. What do you mean by slight misunderstanding? Apparently, Cliffy made some colorful speculations about this crew member's parentage. Then he proceeded to make some unflattering anatomical references. I get the idea. Mills, you can't live with them, and sometimes you can't even house train them. Wait, what? Why, that reminds me of my 14th husband, Flat. He was always brawling. The captain doesn't have time to listen to one of your fascinating personal narratives right now, Flo. He has to figure out how to get Cliffy out of the slammer, right, sir? Right. Uh, yeah. That was what you were doing, wasn't it, Wilco? 
See, I told you the captain wasn't a complete closet case, Flo. I'm with you, sir. Let's go blast him out. That's a fine idea, Drool, but it would draw too much attention. There's got to be a better way. The impression that Flo might, uh, for Drool might be a bit trigger-happy. Why don't you get started on your project, sir? Okay, I guess we're gonna have to figure it out ourselves, so let's try the Space Monkey plan. Let's see what happens. And we put them in our drink, which was a double bourbon, so definitely alcohol. Ooh, these things float, apparently. And they reproduce rather quickly. Here's I can tell they're born pregnant. I figure if we were... Who's the moron who let all the darn space monkeys lose? I figure if we were referencing uh, Trouble with Tribbles, we might as well do it properly. Well, this is certainly interesting. Man, there's a lot of them already. He's a cute little bugger, isn't he? I wonder what would happen if you put him in the microwave. Hey, got a sadistic streak, haven't you, narrator? These pseudo primates seem to possess pronounced proclivity for procreation. Points for alliteration there. Yeah. The atmosphere of the space bar is growing thick with the pungent smelling bodies of space monkeys. It's only a matter of time until the cooling ducts get blocked up. This could turn into a dangerous situation. Indeed. As long as it provides us with the uh, distraction we want it, that's fine with me. Well, let's see if the guards have noticed anything as amiss. So, I'm outside the airlock on an EVA and I hear the phone ring. I gotta climb in, cycle the airlock, decontaminate, climb out of the pressure suit, and run to the phone. I hate that. It's even worse than being called in a shower, I guess. Turns out it's one of those new phone companies wanting me to switch galactic long distance carriers. He's talking about all these big savings I get if I just switch from Sprint to T TNA's Friends and Aliens plan. Could you make this a little more obvious? Can you believe it? What'd you tell them? I said, no way! It just isn't worth it. Alert! 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 Come on, let's go see what it is. Maybe we'll get to beat somebody up. Not unless you want to beat up some monkeys. And they completely ignore me. Whee! Oh, aside from that commercial uh, we just had to witness, that went pretty well. Uh, well, when we looked at the control panel, it said that the controls for the force field were on there. So I guess that we can uh, switch the force field off. There we go. And let's see if we can uh, locate our chief engineer. Which we should be in the second cell, because we already saw the first one was empty. There he goes! Hmm. Now what do we do? Guess we're gonna have to get him out of here, but... We'll have to see how in the next video. Welcome back. We've managed to get rid of the guards, but our chief engineer is still behind bars. I guess we're uh, going to have to do something about that. Let's talk to him. Boy, am I glad to see you, Captain. You've got yourself in a fine predicament this time, Cliffy. I'm sorry, Captain. But it wasn't my fault. How do you figure that? I know, Cliffy. I know. You're not gonna just leave me here to rot in this tiny cell for the rest of my life, are you? Of course not, Cliffy. Eureka isn't going anywhere without her chief engineer. 
Heck, nobody else can even figure out half the jury rigged contraption you've installed. That's nice to feel needed, sir. First rule in uh, job security. Now we all ha all we have to do is get you out of here. Any ideas? Not a one, sir. Maybe you can find something that will get through these bars. But be careful, it's mighty cramped quarters in here. I'd uh, like to make it out in one piece. Well, I can understand that. And it seems that uh, Cliffy understands the first rule of uh, job security. If you make something, make sure that only you understand it. It's common practice in the software industry. Just don't document any, uh, any of the code you write and obfuscate it as much as possible. That way, they can't possibly fire you because nobody else understands your code. You think, may think I'm joking, but this thing act, kind of thing actually happens in real life. Uh, maybe these control panels can help. This cell's closed with an impressively heavy-looking lock mechanism. The cell is constructed of titanium, plasteel, and ferro-concrete. The word impregnable springs to mind as you stare at it. Quiet. That will have absolutely no beneficial effect on the lock mechanism. None of these panels actually do anything. So why are they here? I don't know. Um, let's see, we have a uh, laser cutter. So maybe that will do the trick. The Freyer Chief Engineer! Well, that's no good. We can't use him if we do that. So, I guess... We need something else that could cut through the bars. But what do we have? What do we know that can cut holes into stuff? Hmm. I know. Spike's acid. By the way, if you didn't take Spike with you, I think you can actually beam back to the ship now and collect him. So that's not an issue if you uh, forgot him. But I took him with me to start to save some time. There, Cliffy, now aren't you glad we didn't uh, throw him off the ship? I guess that little beastie is a good for something after all, sir. Quite. Now we'd better get out of here. Before somebody notices what we've done. And or... This face monkey situation gets critical. Which, from the looks of it, it might do so soon. I'm hurrying! I'm hurrying! Sure you are. Could you hurry a bit faster, maybe? That's not a good thing. We blew up the space station! Like bugs on a windshield. <laughs> I'm receiving a coded transmission from Starcon, sir. We are ordered to proceed to Clorox 2 for an auxiliary garbage retrieval mission, sir. Ooh, new job. Well, maybe if we uh, proceed with that... They uh, won't mind uh, so much that we uh, just blew up a space station. Let's uh, talk to some people and see what happened. Can I ask her about uh, Clorox 2, which seems like a good thing. How can I help you, Captain? Hmm, that seems a lot friendlier than she was before. What do you know about Clorox 2, Flo? Not much, Captain. 
Just that it's a small colony on the fringe of the G6 quadrant. The name seems to ring a bell somewhere, but I can't quite place it. Why don't you go in the back and lie down? I'll bring you a cup of hot tea and give you a back rub while you think about it. Wait, what? Huh? You want to give me a what? A back rub, sir. You know, you lie down and I'll start out with your shoulders and work my way down. <laughs> nudge, nudge, wink, wink, sir. I think Flo's opinion of you has altered somewhat, Captain. Uh, uh, no thank you, Flo. I think I'm fine for now. You have a cute butt for an uptight white boy, sir. Help! It seems that our rescue of Cliffy uh, has gone over well with uh, Flo. Too well, I'd say. Do you think we'll get in trouble for that little accident back at the space bar? I certainly hope not, Captain. By the way, that was a very brave thing you did back at the space bar. Why, thank you. I just love the way you took charge of the situation. It gave me moose bumps. Moose bumps? They're like goosebumps, only bigger. I don't want to know. I see. I think I. You ever do it Regellian style, Captain? I can't say that I have, Flo. Could we change the topic? Once you head to green, you'll know what I mean, sugar! Well, it ain't easy being green. I think I liked her better when she hated me. Um, the only other thing we can ask her is... ...what our last orders were, which I still remember. We have to go to Clorox, so that's not really any point. Let's see. What do you want, sir? Looks like we're stuck with another crummy job again. Well, that is pretty much the, our mission, so anyway. Are you really surprised, sir? Nope, I just thought they might give us a break. Fat chance. Yeah. By the way, Captain, what you did for Cliffy back at the station, it was really great, sir. A lot of commanders would have just left him there to rot. And that diversion with the space monkeys? Very creative, sir. It was pretty brilliant, wasn't it? Now, don't go getting all puffed up on me, Captain, or I'll have to smack you upside the head. Well, it's nice that you like what I did, but please don't offer me any back rubs. Flo's been looking at me kind of strangely lately. You wouldn't have any idea why, would you? I really couldn't say, Captain, but I think she was very taken with the way you handled the situation back there on the space station. Uh, confidentially, I think she kinda likes you. Yeah, we already came to that conclusion. Tell me about your mother, Drool. Um, uh, why? I'd prefer to keep our mothers out of this, sir. Though I must admit I've attained, entertained some rather amusing speculation about your progenitors. Okay, on second thought, don't tell me. Um... Can we talk to Cliffy? Yarang? I don't think you can actually talk to him normally through this. You can only give him commands. I finished putting WD-40 back together and I reprogrammed her to perform as our science officer. You can now reach her through the science station on your comm panel. Great! When did you find the time to do that? Anything else, Captain? Uh, well, we have a cloaking device now, so potentially we could cloak the ship, but we don't need to right now. Yes, Captain. Let's try out our new science officer. We'll do that in the next video. Welcome back! 
it's a good thing we rescued Cliffy, because it seems he has finished putting together our science officer, who we can now reach using the middle button here. So let's talk to her. What function may I assist you with, Captain? Um, well, we can ask her to scan planets, which is something we should do according to the SAT test we took in the beginning of the game. Or scan for ships. Well, there's nothing around here. Or give a status report or a recommendation. And these recommendations can actually be quite useful as well. Let's ask her for a status report first. All systems functioning within established parameters, sir. Oh, that's, that's not the funny one. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? I'm fully operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. There is a funny one. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Ah. Ah, there we go. I'm fully operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly, perfectly, perfectly. Right. Let's uh, ask for a recommendation, although at this point we simply need to carry out our orders, so we don't really need one, but still. Not at this time, sir. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Nope, that is all. Yes, sir. Right, um, let's just go to Clorox 2. Which, um, what coordinates, Captain? Which is coordinates 9021, uh, no, not ask. It's 90210. Now, where have I seen that sequence of letters before? Yeah, I'm probably just imagining it. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Good. Light speed. Aye, sir. More garbage pickup. Man, when will Starcon ask us to do something interesting? Probably never, considering we beat Kirk. Uh, Quirk. <laughs> At, uh,. Battlecruiser, so he likes us even less now. He's just gonna keep giving us crappy jobs. Also, we blew up a space station. That can't have gone over well. Um, we already asked her about Clorox 2, didn't we? Yes. Small colony on the fringe of the G6 quadrant. Alright, okay, okay, get the whole pack up thing again. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Okay, regular speed? Aye, sir. Hey. That's strange. I'm not tracking a waste beacon. Maybe we should investigate. I can put us into orbit to take a closer look, Captain. That sounds like a good idea. Um, standard orbit. Standard orbit, aye, sir. He didn't say sir, but anyway. Um, well, we're in orbit. The colonial planet Clorox 2 fills the view screen. Hmm. Why wouldn't there be a waste beacon? Let's try hailing them. Hail planet. Hailing, sir! Strange, there's no response from the surface, Captain. Maybe we should call Starcon. Um... Okay. That is interesting. Okay, let's uh, try uh, hail, uh, calling Starcon then. In if uh, we can't contact the planet, 
informed him of the situation. Hey, Link, sir! You have reached Starcon Central Command. All our wavelengths are busy now, but if you stay on this frequency, an operator will answer your call in the order it was received. Currently, you are number 2,856,875,333. Uh, right, we're not getting through to them, are we? Um, maybe we, there are any ships in the area that we could talk to? Let's see if anybody has any recommendations first. Any suggestions, Flo? I think we should call this one in, sir! I have a bad feeling about this. My corns are starting to itch, and that always means trouble. Hmm. Sir? Well, Mr. Drool, what do you think of our situation? I'm not sure what to make of it, sir, but I think it's very odd that we haven't heard from the colony. Maybe they've been taken over in an enemy sneak attack. We're not at war with anyone, Drool. I know, sir, but maybe we should nuke them from orbit, just to be safe. An interesting suggestion, Drool, but it has a few drawbacks. You're probably right, sir. Let's beam down and take them out hand to hand. I'll take it under advisement. Drool, um, do we need to talk about something? Also, nice aliens reference. Um, let's see. Well, hailing Starcon did not work, uh, but we can actually try a hail ship. Hailing, sir! Yes, yes, Goliath is responding, sir. Putting it on screen. Well, I guess that's the next best, best thing to start on. This better be important, Wilco. Starcon dispatches the Clorox too for garbage pickup, but no trash pot was there when we arrived. The settlement has not responded to our hills either. You're using a priority comm circuit to tell me this? I'm in the middle of a shell recovery. Sir, I thought it might be important. Don't think, Wilco. You're not paid to think. Just to pick up trash. Now, get off this circuit, you bumbling dweeb. But what about the colony? I've got more important things to worry about. It's probably just a fluky calm dish or something. Beam down and check it out if you're so concerned. Now get off this channel, or the only thing you'll be piloting is a fertilizer transport out of Uranus, Wilco. Yikes. I see Quark is his usual charming self. It's nice to see he hasn't lost his flair for diplomacy. Quite. Isn't there somebody else we could talk to? Uh, let's see uh, if our science officer has any useful recommendations. What function may I assist you with, Captain? Well, we're at a planet, so maybe... She can scan it. Atmosphere, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide. Gravity 0.097 normal, average temperature 27 degrees Celsius. Life forms, indeterminate readings. The planet can support oxygen-breathing life forms, sir. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Um, scan for ships. Long-range sensors do not register any ships, sir. Not even the Goliath? Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Recommendation, please. I recommend we send down an away team to investigate the fate of the colonists, Captain. Do you require anything further? Captain Wilco? Nope, that is all. 
Affirmative. I am complying. Okay. Well, I guess we have to beam down and investigate what happened here. Or, uh, fight them hand-to-hand, -hand, like Drool suggested. Assuming there is any, uh, one to fight. But, uh, we'll have to do that in the next video. Welcome back! Something is definitely wrong here at the planet of Clorox 2, and since nobody wants to help us with it, definitely not Quirk, we have no choice but to go and investigate it ourselves. Ooh, where are you going, Drool? This looks a little suspicious. I'd better go with you. Meet you in a transporter room, Captain. Uh, sure, as long as you promise not to shoot anyone. I don't think I trust you anymore. You're a bit too trigger heavy. Okay, let's go to the transporter room. Where did Cliffy go? And hey look, WD-40 is here. WD-40 is an Annihilator android originating from the planet Oakhurst 4. More references to Oakhurst. Even though this game wasn't made by Sierra, because it's Sierra who's located in Oakhurst, not uh, Dynamics. I can't look at him. Alright, let's head down to the planet. I'd better put old Spikey back. Oh right, we still have him. <laughs> Didn't put him back after coming back from the space station, apparently. And we're not gonna need him here. Energize. This may be dangerous, Captain. Let's split up so we can cover more territory. Um, I think there's something wrong with that plan. Don't you think we should stick together? Only if you make a quick wardrobe change, sir. Now isn't the time to play fashion critic, Drool. It's just that, well, your shirt is so red, sir. It's bad luck. I guess he's uh, watched Star Trek. Well, of course, in the uh, TNG and Voyager area, it's more the gold shirts that tend to buy it on away missions, especially in Voyager. Of course, this game was made before Voyager started. Well, let's see. The colony is still here, but no sign of any people. Let's take a look around. Or not, if the game doesn't let me. The windswept colony is eerily quiet and deserted. Also, there's tumbleweed. Rolling along with the tumbling tumbleweeds. Probably a reference to something. Two terrestrial moons, named Larry and Moe by the colonists, are visible above the horizon of Clorox 2. How can they be terrestrial moons? Wouldn't they have to be, you know, uh, in orbit of Earth to be terrestrial moons? Anyway. Also, where's Curly? The scorch marks attest to the recent use of the colony shovel pad. Hmm, so maybe they left. But why? What happened here? Abandoned mining tools and machinery are strewn carelessly about, as if their owners left in a hurry. I have a bad feeling about this. This building has a large hole ripped in the side of it. Hastily sealed up buildings indicate rapid abandonment by their occupants. Well, I think this building with the hole in it is the only one we can actually get in, so let's uh, go there. Ooh, the 
Did you see that? I saw that. I'm gonna save here. Oh, and we ran out of save slots again. I hate it when that happens. Um... Clorox 2. Let's see. The colony greenhouse is a shambles. Broken computers and twisted machinery have been strewn about everywhere. These humidifiers once helped to maintain the delicate moisture balance in this greenhouse, needed to grow the colony's foodstuffs. I guess I'm guessing the walls, uh, the holes in the wall, don't really help with that. The only plant as yet unaffected by the greenhouse's destruction is this hardy fern. Well, ferns are pretty hardy, so... Wilted remnants of what were once healthy vegetable plants are dying slowly here in the ruined greenhouse. So maybe they just left because they didn't have anything to eat anymore? I don't know. This small computer console appears to be the only piece of machinery in working order inside the entire greenhouse. Okay. Let's see if we can use that, then. Uh-oh! What the hell? Hey, it dropped something. Well, well. Aren't you an ugly one? Look who's talking. I was once ugly like you, but look at me now. Perhaps I can make you pretty like me. Now try and dodge my death loogies, monkey boy! You know, a little hemorrhoidal ointment will clear that rash in your face right off. Now get off me! Dodging them isn't that hard. Basically, you need to move your head after he spits. If you do that five times... Somebody shoots him! And it's Drool! Finally, got to shot something. <laughs> nice shooting, Tex! I thought it was dog meat for sure! Hey, he's a real looker. I'd better scout around and see if there's any more of these creatures I can blow away. Meet you back on the ship. Yeah, you do that. What the hell was that thing? He's undergoing some kind of metamorphosis. Hark! <laughs> Thank you. At last, I'm free. What happened here? Entire colony mutated. Bad soup. Secret path over the ridge. Ah! What a bunch of gibberish. People are mutating. Well, that explains the title of the game. But why and how? And does that message we intercepted and the weird air alien and Quirk have something to do with it? I'm sure it does. But, uh... At this point, we don't really know yet. Okay, well, let's, um... Uh, see if we can use that computer now. Access code? I don't know no access code. Okay, that didn't work. Hmm. Where can we find the access code? Can we look at this guy? The late colonist is now part of the corpse corpse. Okay. I, I think actually corpse core is a better pronunciation there, but anyway. Um... Let's, let's take a look at this piece of paper that the uh, mutant dropped. Hmm, that small piece of paper wasn't there before. 
Yes, because he dropped it. Let's take a look-see. The battered scrap appears to have some writing on it. 80869. It's a five-letter code, so it could either be a, uh, a navigation code, or maybe it's the security code for that computer. That sounds like it could be possible. Let's see, 80869. That worked. Well, we'll have to read this log in the next video. Welcome back. We've gained access to this computer terminal and it's showing an activity log, so hopefully that will uh, tell us something about what happened here. Personal log. Clorox 2 Colony Administrator Harry Carey. Stardate 3012.68. Something very strange has been going on here in the colony since the Goliath's last visit. A small survey team is a week overdue and there have been reports of strange creatures roaming the Badlands. No doubt it's just a bit of cabin fever by the more imaginative types, but I'm worried by the disappearance of the survey team. That's interesting, the Goliath's last visit. Well, we know that Quark spoke uh, to that alien that we saw him with about some illegal dumping. So maybe that has something to do with this. Let's read on. Personal log, stardate 3015.68. I am becoming more and more alarmed. The search party dispatched to learn the fate of the survey team hasn't reported back for more than 50 hours. Fear spurred on by more wild rumors about the creatures has the colony on the verge of panic. Not a good thing. Personal log, stardate 3016.68. God help us! A band of the hideous mutant creatures attacked the colony last night. Very few of us escaped the massacre, and I have been wounded slightly. There is no doubt that these creatures are intelligent, and even appear to have a rudimentary understanding of technology. They have captured the shuttle pad, cutting off our only means of escape. Using my personal passcodes, I have sealed the colony so that the creatures will no longer be able to get into any of the undamaged structures. Which explains why you cannot get into any of the other buildings, by the way. Personal log, stardate 3017.68. I'm in agony. The wound I received burns like fire. An hour ago, the mutant creatures blasted off in the colony shuttle. As they climbed the boarding ramp, I got my first good look at a creature in daylight. It was hideous. The tattered rags he wore were the remnants of a survey team survival suit. I have a terrible suspicion about the fate of the colonists. I am now utterly alone on this planet. Dying. I hope. End. Yes, it is. The end. Right. Well, I'm guessing this Harry Carey fellow is the guy who just attacked us. It seems that this wound he sustained caused him to mutate as well, just as what happened to the survey team. This qualifies as a bad thing. Okay, let's uh, go back outside. Now his gibberish mumbling said something about bat soup being over the ridge. And that is something that we uh, want to check out, probably. Also seems that the mutants may have left since they took control of the shuttle pad and the shuttle is obviously not here and these scorch marks indicated its recent use. Which is also not a good thing, which means that these mutants are now on the loose. And considering how that uh, fellow acts towards us, I don't think they're friendly. Well, there is a ridge here. Rocks, pebbles and stones are found in great quantities in this region. So maybe that is the ridge... Uh, <laughs> Roger keeps gliding places. 
that the guy was talking about, and it seems that is in fact correct. We have found a canister labeled Genetics Primordial Soup. Is that the bad soup he was talking about? I'm betting it is. This is Curly, the third moon which orbits this, this dusty planet. Hey, we found him! Rocks are luck, finding anything useful here, Roach. Well, we did find anything useful. Hey, it's our head. We can't... <laughs> okay. Are we just gonna get <laughs> rock ponds looking at the rocks here? Baby, don't you rock on by. Okay, just those two, I guess. Let's look at the can of soup, which is the only actually interesting thing here. The canister bears the phrase Primordial Soup and the logo of the Genetics Research Corporation. A small label near the bottoms Bo uh, so, sorry, a small label near the bottom bears the ominous inscription Biohazards. Teratogenic substance. Do not expose to direct sunlight, air, or water. Do not ingest, inhale, or allow contact with exposed skin. Another fine product from Genetics Research Corp. 41666, Sector G6. 41666, Sector G6. Could those be coordinates? In that case, we could track down this stuff if we wanted to. And how did it end up here? Maybe that's the dumping that the Goliath was involved with, probably. Well, I don't think you can take this with you. The Surgeon General warns that handling a toxic waste container may be hazardous to your wealth. Your health, even. Hazardous to your wealth? That would be weird. Um... Let's just leave. Right. Um, I think that's all we can do here. So let's beam back up. This is Eureka. Go ahead, Captain Wilco. Want to beam up, Flo? Oh, great! Just when I was finally starting to wind up here. Well, I guess a prudent course of action would be to uh, check out do that Genetics Research uh, Corporation. Or try and track down the, sh uh, the shuttlecraft. One of the two, anyway. Can we talk to WD-40? What do you make of this situation, WD-40? There are two possibilities. Either the colonists cannot answer, or they will not answer our hails. In any case, it is our duty to investigate. Right. I think that would actually have made more sense if she sa said it before I beamed down. Let's go back to the bridge. And they're still goofing off, despite the fact that they like me better now. <coughs> then again, why not? What what do they need to do here? I'm picking up a weak signal on an emergency frequency, Captain. I'm putting it on screen. Mayday! Mayday! This is the SES Goliath. Any Confederation ships in range, please respond. SES Goliath, repeat, we're under attack. They came through Shuttle Bay. Oh my god, what's happening to his face? I'm sorry, sir, I've lost the transmission. The message was too brief to pin down the exact source, but I've narrowed it down to the region of the Thraka system. Meanwhile, on the SCS Goliath... Uh-oh. Somehow I don't think that's going to improve his personality much. Right, now what do we do? <laughs> yes, dear! <laughs> Help! 
What do you make of the Goliath's last transmission flow? It was hardly irregular, sir. Quirk sounded like he was in big trouble. You're right. I've never seen him so upset. Except maybe that time when he fell on his fanny in front of Ambassador Wankmeister. Did you notice his face? It looks like he's developed some kind of skin problem. I once had a nasty rash similar to that. It was awful. I couldn't sit comfortably for weeks. Too much information, Flo. What should we do about it? I recommend washing the affected area daily and wearing an antibiotic lip balm. I was talking about the message, Flo. Oh, uh, well, in that case, I think we should try to rendezvous with the Goliath and render whatever aid we can immediately. Probably a good idea. Where were, the, were they again? Where did you say the Goliath's transmission originated from? A transmission came from the vicinity of the Thraka system. Thanks, Flo. You're welcome, sir. Let's uh, talk to Drool, Captain. What's your read in this situation, Drool? Hard to say, sir. That whole business back on the planet definitely packed a weird meter. Something really stinks around here. Funny you should put it that way. But I just put on a fresh batch of roll-on. <laughs> well, you missed the point. Not you, sir. I just meant that something fishy is going on. And I have a sneaking suspicion that Quirk may be involved. What makes you think so? Clorox 2 was in the Goliaths' patrol sector. If anything happened to the colony, Quirk would have been the first one they called. Huh. Well, in that case, he's gotten karmic payback by mutating into one of these monsters, hasn't he? Well, I'll continue in the next video. Welcome back. We've picked up a distress call from the uh, Goliath, and we're currently trying to decide whether or not we should actually help Quirk. I mean, the guy's, uh, uh, guy's an asshole, so why should we? Um, we're busy talking to uh, Drool. Thanks for saving my butt back there on Clorox too, Drool. No problem, Captain. Besides, I've always wanted to try one of those quick draws. Well, you really saved my bacon. <coughs> I'm just glad I can still shoot straight after the nerve injury to my hand. Gives me to shake something awful. Right. Remember not to give... Remember me not to give you a gun again. Well, still, he saved us. Does our science officer have any recommendations? What function may I assist you with, Captain? Not enough data to make a recommendation, sir. No, apparently not. Even though you'd think that uh, the obvious recommendation would be go and find out uh, what happened to the Goliath. Right, well, um, according to Flo, the Goliath is somewhere near uh, Thrakus. So I guess we should go to Thrakus. And that is coordinates 53284. <coughs> coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Right. Light speed. Aye, sir. Do you know anything about it? Nope. Or at least we can't ask her.
Have to wait until we get there. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Good. Regular speed. Aye, sir. No readings from the Goliath, Captain. But I am picking up an escape pod locator beacon on the planet's surface. Ooh. Interesting. Standard orbit. Standard orbit, I. I wonder if the Goliath could be around. Let's look at the planet. The strange new world of Thrakus is visible in the view screen. I need to talk to our science officer. What function may I assist you with, Captain? Scan for ships, please. Indeterminate readings, sir. If there are any ships within scanning range, they're jamming us. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Um, yeah, scan the planet. The atmosphere of this planet is highly toxic to humanoid life forms, Captain. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? You got any recommendations? The most logical course of action is to beam down to, to investigate the source of the beacon, Captain. I recommend an expeditious survey, however. My calculations indicate a 67.5% probability that another ship is within range of the marker beacon. Yeah, the Goliath. Due to the unusual nature of the circumstances we currently find ourselves in, it might be unwise to attract attention to our presence here. One more additional piece of data, sir. The atmosphere of this planet is highly toxic to humanoid life forms. You must utilize a briefing apparatus on the surface or perish. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Nope, that's all. Yes, sir. Right. Good thing we followed the uh, SAT test's recommendation of always beaming, of always scanning a planet before beaming down. <coughs> Otherwise, we uh, might have died. You know. We need a breather mask or something, some kind of breathing equipment when we uh, want to head down to the planet. Since we haven't found any uh, anywhere on the Eureka, I guess it must be in the one location on the Eureka where we haven't been yet, which is accessible via this elevator. The lift goes to the Eureka's pod bay, which is controlled by this button, which we did look at before. That activates the elevator, and then you can just stand on it to go down. Oh, there's Cliffy. Interesting looking place. Very 2001-like. But then it is Bot Bay, so... That's what you'd expect. It's Cliffy. Whom did you expect? I don't know. Santa Claus? I'm too tired to talk just now, Captain. I see that he is engaged in his delicate repair work as well. Let's take a look at this uh, place. The Eureka's pod bay is probably one of the le least used areas of the ship. None of the crew like to come here because this is where the previous captain had his... accident. Oh yeah, Flo told me uh, he fell out of the airlock, which he may or may not have been responsible for. Well, Flo's nowhere around, so I guess we were safe. As long as we don't do anything criminally stupid. These are the pod bay doors for the Eureka. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. The Eureka is outfitted with a Star Roamer EVA pod for emergency repairs and rescue missions. I'm sure we won't be needing that. This was Cliffy's favorite spacesuit until the seat ripped out of his last tour of the on his last tour of duty. Hmm. This pressure suit is intended for the captain's use. Unfortunately, it's much too small to fit you. 
Maybe you should go on a diet. Uh, there's some panels here. This com compartment is used to store rebreather masks. Oh, that's what we need. Yay, mask. I'm gonna save here. Now, in order to get back up the elevator, you can't just click on the lift doors. Is there anything else to look at here, by the way? Look at the panel behind Wilco. Just your ordinary plain vanilla oxygen tank. Well, we don't need that right now. The mask is enough. The Eureka Spot Bay is probably one of the least... Oh, that's the same. I thought you would get a message for the monitor or something. Anything? Guess not. This pressure door provides access to the elevator and serves as a backup seal in case the primary airlock doors fail. No, you can't just uh, click on the doors to get in, like I said. Instead, you have to use the control panel. Um, that's not right. Cliffy scavenged the microphone and speaker from this intercom to rig up a voice-activated flush mechanism for the Eureka's head. When the rest of the crew balked at having to say bombs away each time they used the fac facilities, he hooked it up to the transporter unit instead. Okay, let's see if we can get a good view of that uh, panel. That's better. Okay, so airlock, elevator door, pod rotation, and intercom. We just use the intercom, which doesn't work. The one thing you don't want to do, and I guess this is the uh, the way our previous captain met his end, is press the airlock button. Captain, are you crazy? We got sucked out into the deep void of space. Oh, you can't do that while Cliffy is here. Ah, oh, that's a shame. I guess I'll have to show you that later then. <laughs> you can do it if he's not here. But I guess Cliffy is smarter than uh, Roger. Okay, we want to open the elevator door. Good. Now that we have an oxygen mask, we can safely beam down. Hi there. Anything to say? Yes, Captain. Um, how's it going? I'm fully operational and all my circuits are functioning perfectly. Nope, nothing interesting. Alright, let's beam down. Now, if you just you talk to the transporter, you'll die. You need to wear the mask first. And I think you'll automatically beam down when you do that. Yes, you do. All right. And I guess that's uh, a good point to stop. So we'll explore this strange new planet in the next video. Welcome back. Roger is breathing heavily into uh, the oxygen mask. Let's take a look around. It seems we've found the um, escape pod. The interior of the craft is not visible from your present location. All you can tell from here is that it looks like an escape pod. And it's uh, apparently hot, judging by the air above it. Huge fungi resembling giant mushrooms proli proli uh, proliferate the warm, moist environment of this planet. Why did the mushroom go to the party? Because he was a fun guy! Okay, I stole that joke from someone. Um, a particularly large fungus stems... Sorry. A particularly large fungus stem winds its way through the foreground. Strangely, you half expect to see a large caterpillar smoking a pipe crawl out 
from behind it at any moment. Reference to Carl Lewis's Alice in Wonderland, of course. The Cheshire Cat. Huge fungi resembling giant mushrooms proliferate the warm, moist environment of this planet. We already saw that. The huge stems of the shroomoid groves tower above you. It's sort of reminiscent of the rock peaks in uh, on Astros in Space Quest 4, except they're mushrooms, not rocks. Well, I can't get to um, the uh, pod in a straight line. Can we go to right here? Apparently not. So let's go left across this bridge. Hopefully we can find a way to get to the pod. You could make the mother of all beef stroganoffs with any one of the huge mushrooms growing here. Giant saprophytes proliferate throughout this moist world. Interesting looking place, that's for sure. Let's uh, see if we can get through here. That would take us to the uh, escape pod, indeed. I wonder who would be inside it, if there's anybody inside it. Nope. It seems that whoever came here has vacated. Whoever used this pod can't be far away. I hear a beep. Beeps are never good. All indications suggest that the pod's occupant left in a hurry, not taking the time to shut down. Maybe he or she was being followed by those mutants. This frog probably belonged to the recent occupant of the escape pod. Can we take it with us? Yes. And there's a button. A flashing red button catches your eye. You surmise that it is somehow connected with the homing beacon. Well, let's turn that off, shall we? Good. Well, I guess that's probably a bit too late to stop the Goliath from coming after us, but anyway. Um, well, let's see if we can locate the um, occupants of the shuttle. Well, we couldn't go to the right from where we started, so I guess the only place we could go from here is left. Let's see, maybe there's something near that ledge. However, I'm going to save before I do that. Ooh! hi -yah! What the hell's that? Uh-oh. Going over the edge! Ooh, it's Bia! Help me, Wilco, I'm slipping! Only you had something for me to grab onto. If only I could do something. Uh-oh. That's not a good thing. Oh, those pucoid mutants found me. Do something, Wilco. Uh, they hit her. Also, she pulled my pants down. Give me your hand or something and I'll climb over you and pull up and pull you up after me. Okay, take my hand. Your reach isn't long enough. Try something else. Um, how about the stick? That's an interesting idea, but it doesn't work, apparently. Well, the only thing uh, we have that could be long enough is this piece of paper. No. The coat. Um... Could you, uh, pull me up? Like you said you would. Hello? Little help here? The menacing pucoid mutants could easily finish you off, quickly, if they wanted to. But they are going for bonus points in the pain and suffering category. Apparently. Hang in there, baby. Well, not much else we can do. Ah, okay. I thought B had forgotten about us. Grab onto the vine and climb up. Pull our pants back up. 
Uh-oh. We're surrounded! Oh. Some space hero you are! Sheesh, you couldn't adventure yourself out of a damp cellulized container without inve for part intervention. I didn't realize I could control again. Uh, well, I guess that means we have to do this little bit over, unfortunately. Oh, right. I forgot something. I thought you had to do that after you climbed back up, but... I was wrong. We first need to uh, get Bia up. And then what you need to do before she throws you the vine. Which I just remembered. Is contact Eureka. Flo, have Cliffy beam us out of here. We'll take a few moments to recalibrate the beam out coordinates, Captain. Please hang on for a minute. Well, we're not going anywhere. That's what I had in mind. Uh-oh! Cliffy says your present orientation won't fit within the containment field of the transporter beam. There's a, f a clearing a few meters from your position. Can you make it there? That... do I have any choice? Might be a bit difficult, though. Not really! Eureka, out! There, now they'll know to beam you up once she throws you divine. I forgot! How silly of me. There we go, once again. Oh no, we're surrounded! And he's giving us a dirty look. But now we were beamed up in time. Oh no, Bia! Are you alright? Ah, sorry I tried to kick your butt back there on the planet, Captain Wilco. I thought you were one of those pukoid mutants. Call me Roger, and don't worry about it. Why isn't this progressing by itself? I don't think I'm gonna make it, Roger. One of those bastards sneaked me with that awful primordial soup. Don't worry, we'll fix you up. There's got to be a cure. I'm afraid not. The only thing you can do is slow down the mutations by putting me into cryogenic suspension. Beatrice, you're going to uh, you're asking me to freeze you, and we were getting along so well. I must admit I thought you were a real putz back at the academy, Roger. But you've turned out to be an okay guy. Maybe even more than okay. But we don't have any time for that now. I'm probably not going to make it, and the Pukoids have to be stopped before they trash the entire Star Confederation. Don't say that! How? The Goliath could be parsecs away by now. We'll never catch them before they reach Starcon. They aren't going to get far without this. It's the Goliath's warp distributor cap. Bia, you're a genius! Go Bia! Huh. I bet they weren't expecting that. I know. <laughs> now, put me in the cryo chamber. Quickly. She's modest, too. What the? Who's that, Captain? Ambassador Wankmeister. She escaped from the Goliath. 
Their entire crew has been infected by some strange substance and are turning into hideous pucoid mutants. We gotta get her stabilized before she turns into one herself. What should I do? Well, freeze her. She just told you. I'm an engineer, not a doctor. You better do something quick, though, sir. She's starting to look a little greener in the gills. Maybe that's just her uniform. Or her o jumpsuit or whatever it is she's wearing. Not a uniform, she's a civilian. Okay, we gotta save Bia, but we'll do it in the next video. Welcome back. Bia has been hit by the primordial soup, so she's going to mutate into one of those awful creatures. The only way we can stop her is to put her in cryogenic freeze. And this is the cryo chamber, so we need to use that. This is the button for the cryo chamber. Alright. Click it to open. Then pick up Pia. And put her into the chamber. Now we just gotta freeze her. The holographic image you saw so long ago didn't do the ambassador's beauty justice. But this will rapidly become a moot point if you don't figure out a way to cure her. Yes. Well, it looks like it works pretty much like a microwave. We need to uh, enter the amount of time we need to uh, freeze her, but how do we know how long? Well, there appears to be some text here. Ah, cryo chef. Chef, cooking instructions. Hot dogs, 20 seconds cook. Coffee, 5 seconds defrost. Freeze ambassador, 10 seconds freeze. Wait, that's an odd thing to be on there. Cheeseburger, 25 seconds cook. Fudgesicle, 1 minute freeze. 5 pound rump roast, 20 seconds defrost. Hot chocolate, 5 seconds cook. Hamster, 20 minutes cook. Or a gibless, 90 minutes cook. Ambassador defrost, 10 seconds defrost. Oh, we want a freezer now. It's a good thing that was on there. So, 10 seconds. We'll do the trick. Hopefully that will slow down the uh, mutations long enough for us to find a cure. Bia has been successfully placed in hibernation. The mutation process has been slowed, but she's not out of the woods yet. Quite. Um, can we talk to her? Yes, no. I'm just drawing that once in a while. Right. Let's, um, head back to the bridge. Because I guess we should go to um, those coordinates we found to check our genetics. Because if we can find a cure anywhere, it'll be at the source of this stuff. Uh-oh, something's happening. We found Goliath, sir. Or rather, she found us. The Goliath's approaching at high speed. She's arming her torpedoes. That's not a good thing. Uh, raise shields. Aye, aye, Captain. I don't think it really makes any difference if you raise shields at this point. I don't feel like chatting at the moment, sir. That's just their standard uh, messages. Uh oh, there's a Goliath! He shot at us! Very astute. A brilliant observation flow. Uh, well, don't just sit there, Captain. Do something. She's coming around again. I don't really think it makes any difference if you raise the shields or not. 
But I still like doing it anyway. It doesn't give you any points anyway. Um... Well, I don't think we can fight off the Goliath. She's the flagship of the fleet, and we're a garbage scow. I don't like those odds. So, let's go evasive maneuvers. But, sir, that will take us directly into an asteroid field. It'd be suicide. What should we do, Captain? Well, I don't think we have much choice. Okay, let's risk almost certain death in the asteroid field. Actually, uh, Drool, asteroid fields are incredibly empty. If you plot a random course through the asteroid field in our solar system, in, uh, just any random course, just pro uh, throw a dart at a map or something, the odds are you won't even see an asteroid. You'll ne not even get close enough to be able to see one. Maybe you'll see one as a speck of light in the distance. They're millions of kilometers apart. So hiding in an asteroid field isn't all that effective in real life. Although these do actually appear to be planetary rings, which tend to be a lot denser, but also a lot uh, finer material, like uh, Saturn's rings are pretty dense, but most of it is the consistency of gravel. Anyway, we should go into the asteroid field. Just me ranting about common science fiction misconceptions. Is the Goliath coming around again? But we are getting out of there. We're being hailed by the Goliath, Captain. Putting it on screen. Hello again, Wilco, you insignificant little pimp on the behind of humanity. Speaking of pustules, Quirk, you've never looked better. Ha, huh, you pathetic fool. You've no idea what you're up against. I'm going to puke out the entire galaxy, starting with Starcom. Not if I have anything to say about it. Ha, huh, your puny ship is no match for the Goliath. Au revoir, broom jockey. The next time we meet you won't be so lucky. Ha, huh, we'll see about that. Captain, I'm gonna have to make an Eviator repair the damage from the Goliath's attack. You can monitor me on my on audio over the comm circuit in my precious suit. Be careful, Cliffy. Yes, sir. Preparing to exit Port B airlock. I do actually like that he has to go EVA. It's a lot more realistic than uh, rerouting power they li like to do in Star Trek. I'm heading towards the port stabilizer. Made it. This will only take a minute. I just need to make a few minor adjustments. he does in his usual fashion. Oops! Hey, turn the lights back on. Okay, Captain, that's got her. I'm coming back. Wait. Um, that's not a good thing. Say, uh, Captain, am I just seeing things, or is that gentleman floating out there in space with a surprised expression on his face, our chief engineer? I think you may be right, uh, Drool. What do we do? Recommendations, people! Oh, Captain, you've got to do something! Cliffy's in trouble! We're always rescuing Cliffy in this game. I'm noticing a pe pattern here. You'd better hurry up and rescue Cliffy, Captain. His air won't last forever. I need... Workable suggestions, people. How about WD-40? What function may I assist you with, Captain? Recommendation, please. It would be logical to utilize the Eureka's EVA pod to recover our chief engineer, Captain Wilco. Be sure all pod systems are fully charged and operational, Captain. I have noticed engineering chief Crawford's maintenance standards are 
inconsistent in some areas of the ship. Well spotted. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Nope, that is all. Affirmative, I am complying. Right, so we have to use the pot to go and recover Cliffy. So that means we need to go to the pot bay. Need to push the button first. Now pay attention to what WD-40 just said. Make sure that the uh, pod is fully charged. And actually if you do just go into the pod without doing anything else, you'll find that it is critically low on fuel and you will die. In order to prevent that from happening, you need to take the uh, spare oxygen tank from the uh, cabinet here. You don't need to do anything with it. You don't need to install it in the ship or anything. Tanks. A lot. It's full of air. Gee, great. Great pun there. You'd think you'd need to... Uh, oh. That you'd need to... Uh, install it or something in the pot, but no. Just having it with you will work. If you don't have it with you, uh, things will go rapidly wrong. I'm going to save here, because now, of course, Cliffy's not here. So I can show you what happens if you open the, the airlock door. Which I tried to do last time! I'm sure that will end just fine. No! Oops. Well, here we come, Cliffy. A nice move, Ace. Really spectacular. Well, that didn't go so well. I guess we'll uh, pick up in the next video. Welcome back! This time let's uh, rotate the pod and get into it before we open the airlock. I guess that would be better for our health. Rotate the pod, Hal. And we automatically get out. And because we have the oxygen tank with us, our oxygen meter is full. This analog readout reports the EVA pod's remaining air supply. If you didn't take it with you, it would be one pixel high or something, so you'd really no not be able to make it. The pod's fuel gauge is indicated on a fuel level is indicated on this gauge. This is a radar tracking scope for the EVA pod. This papa was a rolling stone. No doubt Mom was too. I bet you They were, probably. Forward thrust indicator. This lever controls the amount of thrust expelled by the EVA pod's maneuvering jets. And this lever doesn't have a description. It's your favorite hand, you're right. Okay. This is your left hand, which is apparently not his favorite. I guess he's uh, right-handed then. No generic description for the pod? No. How to use the service pod flight instrumentation. This is just a, a manual. The lever on the left is your auto-navigational joystick. Use this throttle to maneuver the EVA pod. As you move the hand over the lever, direction arrows will appear. Click the left mouse button to move in the arrow's direction. The left and right arrows will turn the pod while the up and down arrows will move you forward or backward. The pod is also equipped with auto-stabilizing thrusters. 
If you click in the center of the arrows or change direction, all engines are shut down and the pod is brought to a complete stop until you select a new direction. The right lever is the remote arm control. Click the hand icon on this lever to either retract or extend the remote arm. While the arm is extended, if you click the hand icon on the button next to your right thumb, the remote arm's claws either extend it or retract it. Use this button to pick up objects. The Model 9 Spacefarer EVA pod is equipped with an auto-avoidance system which prevents collision in all but the most extreme circumstances for your safety and convenience. The console in the upper middle panel is your heads-up display. It contains the oxygen and fuel gauges and radar scope. As you spend more time in the pod, your oxygen depletes. Get back to Eureka before you run out of air. The fuel gauge on the right indicates how much fuel you have remaining. Even though your pod is equipped with a 3.2 liter 6 reactor thermodynamic Wankel rotary engine, it still only gets 14 miles per ga microparsecs per gallon. This means too much sightseeing can burn a lot of fuel real quick. The heads-up radar shows you targets within your immediate vicinity. Using a dandy 801286 microprocessor running at a blazing 416 MHz, which I'm sure must have seemed real quick in 1993, all irrelevant targets such as asteroids and space debris are filtered out and only relevant targets are displayed in amazing texture map 3D renderings. However, since the display is so small, they usually look like little blips. The green blip is always a Eureka, while any other blips are red. To return to the Eureka, simply fly within range of the Eureka's autonav tractor beam, which will pull you inside. Actually, we had a real neat docking scene all laid out, but that would have pushed us onto another disc. I wonder if that story is true about the disc. I really don't know. Two interesting things in there. One is a reference to a Wankel rotary engine, which, despite the weird sounding name, is an actual type of engine. Uh, I think the, Ma the Mazda RX-8 actually has a Wankel rotary engine. It's a bit of a strange thing to put in a space pod, but anyway. And, of course, the computer reference. Not only did they apparently think that uh, 416 MHz was really fast back in 1993, even though this computer I'm running this on is a 3 GHz system, uh, and it's nowhere near as far into the future as Space Quest is supposed to be, and also they referenced the 801286, because nobody had predicted the fact that Intel would stop naming their processors that way. Of course, the 486 was the last processor named that way, after that we went to the Pentium. Okay, well, uh, we'd better get to work on rescuing our chief engineer, who is the red blip on the radar, according to the uh, instructions. It's not that hard, you basically just go uh, left until he is in front. There he is. Then go forward until he comes close. Then extend the arm. Push the claw button and maneuver a little until it says target in range. Oh, uh, we, we missed it. There we go. Close the claw. Cliffy has been successfully grappled. Now all that remains is to make it back to the Eureka, if you can find it. Well, the Eureka is the green blip on the radar, so it's not particularly hard to find. Because of the auto-avoidance system, you don't really need to worry about any of the rocks unless you're stupid enough to fly straight at them. Like I'm doing now. That's the Eureka. Good flying, Ace. You've returned to the safety of the Eureka. We still have plenty of oxygen and fuel left, so we did that nicely. No! You okay, Cliffy? Just give me a minute to rest and catch my breath, sir. Thanks for pulling my butt out of the sling again, Captain. That's two I owe ya. And don't you forget it. Think nothing of it, Chief. Okay, I won't. 
But you need to get us out of here, sir. I don't know how much longer the Eureka can stand the pounding she's taking. From all the asteroids I get. You just sit there. By the way, it's a good thing I'm running this in DOSBox, because if you try to run this on a modern PC without emulation, this game has some horrible timing issues, which not only makes the animations run way too quickly, it also makes this sequence pretty much impossible to do before running out of oxygen. Alright, um, now that we have done that, we should uh, head back up to the bridge. Let's not open the airlock. Okay, go to the bridge. So now, I guess we should go and try and find a cure for this mutation thing, for which we will need to go to the genetics research lab, the coordinates for which we saw on that soup can on Clorox 2. Well, let's just see if uh, anybody has anything to say. Yes, Captain! Is there any way we can get through the Starcon to warn them about the Goliath? The Goliath is jamming all transmissions, Captain! I'm trying to burn through, but there's not much I can do. She's got one of those new terawatt ECM suits. Keep trying, Flo. That's a shame. Would've been nice if we could've warned somebody. You seem a little on edge, Flo. I've been through a lot in this mission, sir, and then you go and bring that little tramp on board? Wait, are you talking about Bia? Flo, I'm surprised at you. She's a ranking ambassador with the Star Confederacy. She's hurt, and she needs our help. Maybe so, but you gotta wonder about a girl with a name like Wankmeister. Well, she's got a point there. Do we have any orders to cover this situation, Flo? I'm afraid not, sir. I guess we're on our own. Swell. Any idea what we should do next? We should try to find out where the pukoids came from, sir. Well, that was my idea. Clorox 2 would probably be a good starting point. Perhaps there's something down there that will yield a clue to their origins. Well, we already found that. So we need to go to the uh, genetics lab, because we already found the clue on Clorox 2. That was all right, yes. How about you, Drew? What can I do for you, sir? Any ideas on how we can stop the Goliath? I don't know, sir, if we could sneak up on them somehow. Maybe sneak aboard and get control of their ship. But they'd see us coming a mile away on their scanners. How, what about a frontal assault? Even with my stunning accuracy, it would be a Google Plex to one shot, sir. We'd probably be vaporized. Hmm, we need a way to sneak up on them. Good thing we got that cloaking device. I guess if you didn't get it yet, now you could actually go back to uh, retrieve it. Although, I must admit, I've never tried that. What should we do about the ambassador? I'll tell you what we should do about her. Put the little tart out the airlock and be done with it! Come on, Flo! Now, now, Flo. Jealousy doesn't become you. I think we should try to track down the source of this phlegm or slime these pukoids seem to be infected with. What good would that do? The stuff has to come from somewhere, right? If we can find out who or what made it, perhaps we can discover a way to fight it. Good idea. The one I already had, actually. How do you like our chances of getting through this? I'm thinking probably pretty bad. Let me see, we're up against a horde of rampaging mutants in the stolen battlecruiser that outguns us a hundred to one. 
basically, sir, I'd say we're screwed. Yeah, I can't really argue with that analysis. Let's see if our science officer has any recommendations. What function may I assist you with, Captain? No, no recommendations. Well, I guess we should head over to um, the genetics uh, company, but we'll do that in the next video. Welcome back. We are still in the asteroid field, as you can tell by that shock. But not for long, because we um, need to figure out where the uh, pucoids came from. And of course, we have found a clue to that back on Clorox 2. Because there we found this soup can from the Genetics Research Corp Corporation. And it had a sector number on it, 41666. So let's ask uh, Drool to lay in the course there. What coordinates, Captain? 41666. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Seems that the Goliath is not presently here, which is a good thing. It allows us to... Uh, Get out of the asteroid belt. Well, light speed. Aye, sir. Well, since we're heading for an unknown destination, I doubt Flo knows anything about it. No, we can't even ask. The same messages as before. Of course, the soup can we found was probably part of the waste that Quark dumped on Clorox 2 for that alien we saw him with back at the space bar. And now Quark is reaping the results of that himself. We're approaching our destination, Captain. All right, let's see what we find here at these mystery coordinates. Regular speed. Aye, sir. Hmm. Looks like some kind of biodome. Reminds me of the thing that Species 8472 used when they were simulating Starfleet Academy. Um... Anyway, let's see if we can orbit it. Standard orbit, I. Hmm. Now the question is, what is it? And what does it have to do with the mutations? All that remains of the genetics research station is a single envirodome. Uh-huh. Let's see if anybody has anything to say about this. And that's still the same thing as before. As is this. Maybe our science officer has something more intelligent to say. At the very least, we could sh sh scan this place. What function may I assist you with, Captain? Uh, scan this place. I'm detecting power fluctuations inside the Envirodome, sir. Sensors register debris in the area as well. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Hmm. Power fluctuations in debris, and the message when we looked at it said it was all that remained, so that begs the question what happened to the rest of it? Did it blow up? I guess so. Recommendation? This facility is not listed in the Starcon registry or any of our other library databases, sir. Structural analysis and sensor readings indicate a 92% probability this is a research facility of some kind. 
I recommend we send an away team down to investigate this station, Captain Wilco. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? No. Yes, Captain Wilco. Well, I guess we'd better do as she says and beam down. Well, it looks safe, and when we scanned it, she didn't say anything about needing oxygen masks or anything. So, I'm sure we can just beam down. You know, it sure would be nice if we had transporters in real life. I mean, sure. There's the occasional transporter malfunction episode in uh, Star Trek, but still, they'd be really useful. And they really are the safest way to travel. I mean, honestly, what's the chance of anything going wrong? I recommend a thorough investigation of the installation, Captain. There is a high degree of probability that we will locate information concerning the genesis of the teratogenic substances associated with the pucoid mutants. It is also possible, although significantly less probable, that we may discover a means to combat the menace of the pucoids. And a way to cure Beatrice. At least that's what I'm hoping we'll find. <laughs> Alright, let's beam down. Energize! Oops. You know what? I take it back. I don't like transporters. Looks like you've had a zany transporter blooper, Rog. Quick, get a camera. Galactic Inquirer will pay you ten buckazoids if they publish your photo. Oops. Looks like... We are a fly, and there's a fly with our body running off in that direction. I like they changed the walk cursor into a fly. This is uh, an unusual situation. I'm trying to look at me. Well, that seems to be impossible here. Let's look at the area then. This area of the Envirodrome appears to be devoted to the cultivation and study of wetland ecosystems. Dark shapes are visible moving just beneath the surface of this small pond. Hmm, that sounds dangerous. Quaint stone footbridge leads to the west. This entire region of the genetics facility is enclosed by a hermetically sealed glass and play steel envirodrome, which is a good thing considering its proximity to the black void of deep space. This tree reminds you of one you used to climb as a young boy back on Xenon, and so does the big dent in your head as you got uh, you got from falling out of it. Hmm, that explains a lot. It seems our uh, other half uh, dropped something here. Looks like your better half dropped something, Raj. And it bears a striking resemblance to your communicator. Well, that's a good thing, because we need to uh, contact Cliffy so he can put this mess right. So, let's fly on to the communicator. There we are. Now I can look at me. Looks like there's a fly in the ointment. And that fly is you. That would be where Flo's cheerful desires would appear, if you could only activate the communicator's transmit key. Which key is it, though? This is a transmit button for the communicator. Oh, it's that one. Okay, well, since we can't actually use our hands, because we don't have any at the moment, nor do we have our inventory, which I guess makes sense. I guess our other uh, half has the inventory. Walk onto the button, but nothing happens. Apparently, Roger is not heavy enough in this form. Come on, something, please. Okay. Uh, 
and this is a fairly obscure puzzle. Um, also one that's liable to get me... ...killed. So, I'm going to uh, replace this erroneously spelled save game... ...with the fly. In reference to the movie that this is obviously based on. What you're supposed to do... ...is fly over the pond... ...which causes a frog to leap out. Hello? Which activates your communicator, and I didn't even get eaten. It is possible to get eaten there, that's why they're saved. But it doesn't always happen, but it seems that we have gotten the attention of somebody on the other side. And of course that's Flo. Which means that now we should be able to talk to them. But we'll do that in the next video. Welcome back! Roger is not quite feeling his usual self, due to the fact that a transporter malfunction has turned him into a fly. It's always a danger with transporters. Well, a helpful frog has turned on our communicator, so hopefully we can get in touch with Cliffy and sort this whole mess out. Hopefully we can talk in this form. Seems like it. Because our uh, speech icon is available. Can somebody up there explain to me how the captain of a starship can be reduced to a common house fly? Yuck, you look hideous, Captain! Thanks for the pep talk, Flo. Tell Cliffy to get down here. Now! I'll inform him, sir, uh, of your predicament, sir. But the transporter is malfunctioning again. Yeah, we noticed. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed. Captain, sensors have located a large underground structure to the west of your position. Why don't you go check it out while we work on the transporter problem? I'll do that, Flo, but please tell Cliffy to get down here ASAP. We'll go out. Okay, well, help is on the way, it seems. So, in the meantime, we are going to do some exploring while still a fly. I don't think you can actually head east here. No. So let's head west instead. Hmm. Well, this is sure a pretty place for a research station. Let's take a look around. A large waterfall cascades noisily down from the ceiling of this chamber into a small pond below. The large man-made waterfall adds a moist touch to the artificially created surroundings. We have a pool and a pond. The pond would be good for you. A small waterfall and a stream feed the little pond from the north. any of the plants. A bizarre example of genetically engineered plant life. Hopefully they don't have any Venus flytraps around here. Because that could end badly for us. Hmm, this rock formation is somewhat suspicious. Oh look, it's a cleverly concealed hidden doorway. Very cleverly concealed. And there seems to be some kind of slot next to it. It looks like every other electronic card key lock you've ever seen. Well, as long as those um, card key locks were hidden in a rock phase, I guess. Oh, well, we don't have a card key. Except, uh, actually, we don't have anything at the moment. But I have a feeling Roger will fit through the gap in this, uh, in this current state. And now we are inside the locking mechanism. It seems like the locking mechanism is made up of a bunch of laser beams. 
You're standing on a plate designed to precisely align a keycard with the light beams inside this locking mechanism. You've managed to buzz your way through the keycard slot into an electronic door locking mechanism. So since these light beams are part of the locking mechanism, let's check out what happens when we uh, interrupt one of them by walking over them. Ooh, this one triggered part of the lock. This one did not. This one does. This one does not. This one does. This one does not. And this one does not. This one does. And this one does not. So it seems that in order to trigger this lock, you need to block the... Um, Uh, corners, but not of uh, not corners, the sides actually. You need to block the beams on the sides, but not any of the others. We'll see if that information comes in handy later. I have a feeling it might. Let's see, meanwhile, if we can venture further into this building. Aha! Some kind of laboratory. I'm guessing there won't be an awful lot we can do here as a, as a fly, though. Well, we'll see. This appears to be some kind of genetic research laboratory. Advanced machinery, experiment cages, and specimen containers containing bizarre creatures are found throughout the room. Specimen jars containing grotesque examples of misapplied genetic engineering line one wall of the laboratory. A dim shape, slightly darker than the surrounding shadows, huddles in the back of this cage. Oh, better stay clear, then. A small whirring noise emanates from this cage. This specimen cage is empty. Actually, the rest of them are empty. What's this back here? This appears to be... oh, um, no. Okay, don't let me look at that stuff, then. The card key slot is visible next to the lab door. Well, there is a computer monitor down here, which is uh, conspicuously flashing, trying to draw our attention. And that's at least something we can do in our fly state. We can look at the monitor. This computer mon workstation appears to be functional. Well, let's fly onto it. And it's flashing danger, Will Robinson. Emergency jettison sequence activated. Dome jettison will occur in zero seconds. Jettison complete. Aha, uh -huh. so apparently this dome uh, separated itself from the others when something went wrong. That is interesting. I wonder if we can find out what went wrong. Well, there's a restart button here, so let's restart the computer and hopefully we'll be able to get at some of the files. Genetics. We play God, so you don't have to. Their logo is suspiciously reminiscent of the Dynamics logo. Also, it just crawled away. Um... Right. We have a couple of options. Systems, Activity Log, Projects, and Accounting. So, uh, what should we look at? I guess the Activity Log might be interesting. We can see what happens. Let's see. Time. 1821.20. Station OU812. Okay. Well, that's, uh, I know where that's a reference to, of course. Activate it, anyway. OU812, uh, that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, by the way. Like the words, you know? OU812. Oh, um, okay. 1821.56, user 453 logged onto mainframe at station OU812. 
1822.29, Astro Chicken 3, and House of Doom program initiated. Someone has been playing games at that station. I'm guessing that may be this station, but I'm not sure. Astro Chicken 3, and House of Doom program terminated. I'm very glad that the designers didn't make us play that game. User 453 logged off mainframe at station OU812. Level 3 auto security alert issued. Comlink failure. Level 3 security alert override. Authorization 453 verified. So whoever this person 453 is overrided the security of overrode even the security alert. Let's check the next page. Let's see, level 1 priority alpha security alert. Intruder alert. Auto fire suppression system activated. Shuttle bay 1. Structural integrity failure. Dome 1 depressurized. System failure. Mainframe offline. Backup internet activated. Emergency computing systems activated. System power failure. Emergency power activated. Emergency evacuation. Abandoned station. Authorization 159 verified. Emergency scuttle program activated. Dome 1. Destruct fail safe reached. Dome 1. Emergency scuttle program activated. Dome 2. Scuttle procedure completed. Dome 1 jettisoned and detonated. Destruct fail safe reached. Dome 2. Scuttle program activated. Dome 3. Scuttle procedure completed. Dome 2 jettisoned and detonated. Dome 3 scuttle procedure aborted. Authorization 999 verified. Power stabilized. Emergency systems deactivated. Dome 3 jettison sequence activated locally. Jettison failsafe reached. Dome 3 sealed. Dome 3 jettisoned. System halted. And that's where we came in. And the question is, who did this? Well, the game isn't entirely explicit about it, but my personal guess is... I could be completely wrong here. That... Um, the Pukoids actually came back to the station uh, and attempted to destroy it. Possibly in an attempt to uh, make sure that nobody could find a way to stop them. But somehow somebody prevented the destruction of this dome. Okay, well, we'll see if we can learn anything more from this computer in the next video. Welcome back! We're still in fly form. Uh, we're trying to look at the computer. The activity log told us that somebody tried to blow up all three domes, but someone prevented this dome from being destroyed. Although we don't really know why. Let's take a look at the projects. Uh, let's see, what can we find here? Genetics Projects Inventory. Primordial Soup. Feasibility Study of Metabacterial Transformations in Terraforming and Space Colony Applications. Well, that's a soup can we found, so I would like to know more about this project. Project Goal, to create a survivable and highly adaptable metabacteria to enable terraforming on planets currently unsuitable for human habitation. I have no idea what a metabacteria is supposed to be. <laughs> I mean, I know what the word meta means, and I know what the word bacteria means, but in the combination of the two is just nonsense to me. It would be maybe a bacteria that makes bacteria or something, I don't know. The metabacteria will serve as a base for an artificial food chain on selected planets, synthesizing complex proteins as a natural byproduct pr product of its metabolism. To put it in terms of the layman, it will eat poison, giving off water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and producing a rich organic base that other introduced organisms can feed upon. In essence, the metabacteria will create a living primordial soup. Mm hmm, sounds useful. Experimental Summary After three months of preliminary trials, the bacterial strain Caseus velox has shown the greatest promise. 
The vigor of this species is impressive, and its astonishing reproductive rate makes it an ideal candidate for our purposes. Something tells me something went wrong with uh, this experiment somewhere. Primary experimental trials will bombard Caseus Velox with harsh radiation to confirm hardiness and test adaptive ability. Placing a petri dish of the bacteria behind a computer monitor for a period of hours will expose it to harsh radiation conditions similar to those of a, on an uninhabitable Class D planet. Later, we shall repeat the procedure using a safer type of radiation such as ga a gamma ray source. You know, this really makes me happy that we switched to LCDs rather than CRTs. They were not act actually that dangerous, though, but anyway. Science log, stardate 3234.22. Initial results with Caseus Velox are encouraging. It thrives in a radiation environment as long as adequate food sources are provided. We are well on our way towards engineering the first true metabacteria. A few specimens have manifested undesirable genomes after successive trials. Steps will be taken to cull the recessives so that the entire population isn't compromised. I believe we have discovered and removed all remaining undesirable latent genetic traits in Metacaseus velox. The next step will be to introduce life mice into an environment prepared by Metacaseus. Hmm. Several subjects have demonstrated teratogenic side effects as a result of ingesting the primordial soup gestalt. The mice have turned into slimy, false, foul-smelling, bad-tempered metarodents with attitudes. It seems that Metacaseus has infected the DNA of the mice, much like a virus. This is unprecedented event. Further study is indicated. Quite an unprecedented event. Since when do bacteria behave like viruses? They're two, com two completely unrelated uh, life forms, but anyway. Also, I have the feeling we uh, see here the first case of our mutation. Aye, we got points. There must be something interesting on this page. The experiment is not progressing well. Several test subjects have begun mutating wildly. The morphology of the creatures is singularly unrodent like. They resemble nothing so much as ambulatory piles of goo with teeth. Sounds cool, I'd like to see one. The only thing which appears to have any effect on, the, on an affected specimen, short of killing it, is the application of extreme cold at temperatures below minus 200 degrees Celsius. That is cold. Cell mutations are slowed dramatically. Where did we go wrong? Hmm. So apparently, the way to at the very least slow down the mutations is extreme cold. Well, we sort of already knew that with the cryo freeze, of course. But maybe we can use this information if we want to combat some other mutants. I don't see how at this point, but who knows. Okay, final play page. One of the metamice bit and infected one of the lab techs today. We're putting him into cryonic hibernation to slow the progress of the disease, but I'm afraid that without a cure, his chances of survival are non-existent. The experiment is a failure, and is scheduled to be terminated. Now what am I going to do? I've got an entire warehouse full of this slop. H.H. Well, my guess is that at this point he contacted... Captain Quirk, or maybe the other alien, to dump the stuff. Which is the toxic dumping that Beatrice, at the beginning of the game, was complaining about. Okay, let's take a look at the encounting menu. Maybe we can find some more evidence in there. Let's see. 120 gig SCSI drives. I find it depressing to think that SCSI would still be used this far into the future. I don't know how far into the future it is, but it, I know it's far enough into the future that I would not expect them to still use SCSI. SCSI. Anyway, and I'm sure that 120 gigabytes seems really big to uh, the people who created this game. And now I have... well... 
about 20 times that amount of storage just on my PC. And it was quite expensive as well, 2,955 buckzoids. Classification R&D. A 986 at 66 megahertz. I'm guessing that's what it means anyway, because that's the usual notation. That was used back then. Again, running full of the fact that Intel doesn't actually name their chips like that anymore, but still. An Amigo 9000. Sure, why not? Astro Chicken 3, which is classified as research. Hmm. As a researcher myself, I have to say, fairly accurate. Blow NS card. Probably a reference to some kind of computer hardware as well, but not entirely sure what. I'm missing the pun here. Anyway, it's classified as research. A BST Suavo 486-33. For R&D purposes, they got two of them. For some reason, the second form was more expensive. I don't know why. A Dandy 2500-SUX. Furniture. Okay. An external 900,000 baud modem. For research purposes. I don't really know if that's fast or not, because a baud is a flexible unit, depending on how many bits are actually encoded in about, this might be quicker or uh, quicker than the number makes it seem. Because the old 56k uh, dial-up modems were not actually 56,000 baud. They use lower baud number, but use special encoding to encode more than one bit in a single baud. Anyway, not important. Again, Probably not as fast as an actual internet connection nowadays, regardless of what they meant. AHP Ramjet Scanner. Aren't ra Ramjet a type of jet engine? Why would you have a scanner with that? Uh, J50 keyboard controller. Hey, and this is interesting. Reigns T Quirk has been given 50,000 buckazoids as a bribe. I'm sure that wasn't uh, on their annual research uh, budget statement. Why they keep it in the accounting records is already a, quite a mystery. Anyway. And there's more of them. This must have something to do with the uh, the dumping he did for them. Corona Ale cases for 30 bucks so it's classified as testing. Again, seems perfectly reasonable. A Laser Pet 3, not entirely sure what that is, but it's miscellaneous. Liquid Nitrogen cans. Hmm, Liquid Nitrogen? I can't offhand remember what the temperature of Liquid Nitrogen is, but I'm fairly sure it is below minus 200 degrees Celsius, so that would be useful. Uh, Madam Zorba, consulting. I have the feeling that this is a different kind of consulting. Anyway, Max LC, Mitsuzuki monitor. What did Mitsubishi and Suzuki merge or something? A Ninjitsu 520 gigabyte SCSI. Novelty teeth. Oh, these are classified as personal. A phony camcorder. Classified as research. And programmer cubes, whatever they are, classified as incentives. I guess they would give them to the programmers. I don't I don't know what they are. Are they like sugar cubes? I have no idea. Well we'll uh, continue to read the accounting section. I don't think there's much more of it, but anyway. In the next video. Welcome back! We're still looking at the accounting records, and they told us that they have bribed Captain Quirk, probably to do that dumping for him, for them. Also I checked and the uh, boiling point of liquid nitrogen is actually um, 77 Kelvin, or minus 196 degrees centigrade, which puts it slightly short of our mark, but I guess it can exist at... Uh, temperatures below minus 200, because it doesn't freeze until minus 210. 
So, I guess it'll do for our purposes. See if there's any more to this. Yes, one more place. A radial video adapter. A radial video interface. A Raptor 213 megabytes IDE drive. I'm not even using IDE anymore. <laughs> it's been replaced by Serial ATA. Um, but apparently, this research lab is still using it for some reason. A recorder transcriber. A refrigerator. A Spintel Netport Base T. Base T? A Base T network? Are they kidding? Anyway. Uh, target 64 board. A target board. A Wowtech scanner. An X ray machine. A Z80 keyboard controller. <laughs> okay, now they're just making fun of us with all this old, old hardware. And a contour chair, which is apparently spare parts for some reason. Why was the X-ray machine personal, by the way? What are they planning to do with it? Okay. Let's go back to the main menu. And let's uh, look at systems now. Mm-hmm. One, two, three. This is apparently what the research station looked like before uh, somebody decided to blow it up. Currently only number three is left. Envirodome one, data link non-functional, yes, because it's destroyed. Same is true for Envirodome two. Envirodome three, operational, standby power, backup computing systems active. Right, and that uh, gave us access to the security button. I guess we can look at the security cameras. There we go. Hey, that's my body! Get out of there! I don't want to hang around in a dumpster. At least now we know where he is. Check the other cameras. <coughs> okay, that's where we started. Where's our communicator? Nothing else suspicious going on. Oh, Cliffy and WD-40 are beaming down. Finally! It's about time Cliffy fixed that dang transporter. I'm really gonna bug him about this one for a long time. Nice pun there, Roger. Okay, well that's all, so... Doesn't look like we can do anything more here, so let's fly away. And head into the key card slot. Go outside and meet with Cliffy, who can hopefully put our body back. Would be nice. Oh, there's Cliffy. It's none other than WD-40, Annihilator Android, come science officer. I can't look at Cliffy for some reason. Well, let's just fly to him. <coughs> Cliffy, it's just a hunch, but I think there's something wrong with the transporter. Can you describe the problem, sir? Looks like this is another text box that isn't advancing by itself. I hate it when it randomly does that. Will you look at me? I'm a fly! Yeah, sure are. What happened to the rest of you? He's in a container. I think I, uh, I mean he, uh, it, crawled in the trash bin out back. Okay, I'm pretty sure I can fix you up. Uh, what is this dumpster? I think it's behind that large rock outcropping. Lead the way, Captain. Okay, well... Excuse me, Captain. I'm going to scan the perimeter. You do that. Wow, neat, she can still fly. 
Oh, behind the large rock outcropping, which would be around here somewhere. Ah, there we go. How's your body, Captain? Hmm, some people might say you've never looked better. I think I can fix you up, Captain. I just have to reverse the face polarity on the transporter interface grid. Wait, wasn't there a question on the SAT? I need to park yourself on your own, on old dung breath here for me to descramble the two of you. Okay, let's do so. Here goes nothing. Energize. Boy, Captain, I'm sure glad you're back to no more. You're really starting to bug me. Ha! Huh. Everybody's a comedian. That's not funny, Chief. You made the same joke like five minutes ago. Sorry, sir. Uh, how do you feel? Except for a strange urge to go jump in that fertilizer bin and roll around, I feel pretty normal. I guess that is pretty normal for Roger. I sure have some setup those genetics boys got here. You haven't seen the half of it. I flew through this locking mechanism and found a big underground lab next door. Of course, there was only so much I could do there as a fly. Anyway, there was a lot of really high-tech gizmos and all kinds of advanced technology. A moment too late, you realize saying the words advanced technology to Cliffy is like showing a photograph of helpless women and children to a Doberman Pinscher. A hungry gleam comes to your engineer's eye. Right. Really? Uh, why don't we take a closer look at that lock, Captain? You never know. If we can open it, we might even find something we can use against the Pucod critters. I'll meet you there. And he slowly walks away. Well, at least I'm me again. It's you! Roger Wilco, wacky space guy, and no longer a fly. A worn footpath leads to the foot of the bin. This trash dumpster is similar to many others you have surfaced during your long and distinguished janitorial career. Distinguished. I didn't think he was that good at it. The function of this machinery is utterly beyond your comprehension. But then, so are a lot of other things. Well, he's not wrong there. You can't quite put your finger on what it is, but this palm tree gives a vaguely menacing impression. I don't know why either, to be honest. <coughs> um, that's not what I meant to do. Perimeter secured, Captain Wilco. Here is your communicator, sir. I located it during my scans of the area. Thanks, WD-40. I believe I can be of the most help back on the ship. Please be me aboard, Cliffy. Okay, well, let's see if we can't get through that lock in our own normal person-sized form. It looks like an electronic card key lock. Because that's what it is. That will not be of any help. Maybe we can just force the door open. Not here. Okay. Well, we do have a card. But... That's probably not going to work. I'm actually going to try it, but I'm going to save first. Because I think you might lose points if you try it without the card being right. 
The lock simply rejects your card. And uh, no, we did not lose any points, which is good. Well, um, we know what parts of the um, locking mechanism must be blocked, so if we can cut the right holes into the card, we should be able to make it work. And we have a hole punch, which we took from Cliffy's tool toolbox way back at the beginning. By the way, if you hadn't taken it, you can actually beam back at this point and get it. So that's not a problem. <coughs> now, we saw that the um, beans at the end needed to be blocked, while everything else needed to be... Uh, not blocked, I guess. So, we cut holes in the shape of an X. Which should do the trick. There we go! I looks dangerous down there, Captain. I volunteer to stand guard up here. Brave as always, aren't you, Cliffy? How about that uh, technology you were so interested in? Well, I guess we'll go back inside the lab in the next video. Welcome back! Turns out, uh, I did actually lose points last time for using the keycard incorrectly. Although it doesn't subtract points when you do that, it actually gives you less points for doing it correctly if you've, do do uh, if you've done it wrong once. Um, I've gone back and corrected this, so you now you see how I have 200 points more than I did in the, the end of the last video. You're supposed to get 500 points for opening the lock, but if you've used the key card before punching the holes in it, you'll only get 300 points. So that's something to watch out for if you want maximum score. Alright, well, we're back in here. There's not an awful lot we can actually do. Uh, we could look at the computer again, in case you haven't looked at everything yet. Slightly easier to use now that we have fingers. But that's not important. What is important is this thing on the wall here. Which you can't actually uh, look at. Which does not make things easier. Get closer first. Okay. I'm not sure if it's a glitch or if there's something wrong with my version of the game that you can't look at some things. I do not know! Oh, it opened a cabinet and there seem to be two canisters inside. A pair of liquid n nitrogen canisters. Perhaps they could be used against the pucoids. Perhaps. So let's take them with us. That ought to be quite cold. Can we close it again? No. Um... I think that this is all that you can actually do here. The only thing you couldn't do as a fly. Oh, we need to key use the keycard again? Sometimes there's just no logic to these things. What did you find, Captain? I've discovered that the pucoids have a critical weakness. They can't stand the cold. Extremely low temperature temporarily hands halts the molecular action of the primordial soup that causes the mutations. Does it reverse the process? Unfortunately not. I'm afraid not, but at least it's better than nothing. Did you find anything else? I find a couple canisters of liquid nitrogen. Great! Give them here. Maybe I can rig something up to use against the pu pucoid critters. That would be helpful, uh, Cliffy. I sure hope so, Cliffy. Well, Captain, I think we've done all we can here for now. Let's head back to the ship. Well, Captain, what do you want to do now? Oh, well, we want to beam back to the Eureka, actually. 
I'll beam us up now, Captain. Too bad we didn't find any way to cure a beer. There's got to be some way to help Beatrice, Cliffy. I really can't think of any offhand, sir. What's your beastie so excited about? That's a good question. What is it, Spike? I think he's trying to tell us something. What is it, boy? Stimmy stuck down a well? He's jumping on the cryo chamber. Is that it, Spike? You want us to jump on the cryo chamber? I don't think so. Ah, uh, didn't think so, sir. Now he's jumping on the transporter. Hmm, what could he be trying to say? What do you think the critter is trying to tell us, Captain? What are you trying to tell us, boy? We should jump on the cryo chamber and then jump on the transporter. Somebody fell down the well. The mill is on fire. Or, option four. We should initiate a manual control bypass to reverse the face polarity of the interface grid and then use the transporter to reintegrate Beatrice's DNA molecules. I have a hunch it's that last one. Yeah, no, that just might work. He's pretty smart for a space whatever it is. Good boy, Spikey! Get the ambassador ready, sir. Oh man, the transporter. Oh, he automatically puts Spike back. Why did he put him in his shirt first? I guess they didn't have an animation for him uh, carrying Spike any other way. Okay, we need to prepare Beatrice for this procedure, and for the love of God, do not click the hand icon on the uh, cryo chamber, because doing that opens it. And if you open it, there's no way to close it again. Clicking the hand icon on it again would then take Beatrice out, who is still frozen, then crumbles into dust. So look at it first. It seems that the uh, mutations are starting to take a hold, although, of course, much slower than they otherwise would, thanks to the cryo freeze. Though Bea lies frozen in suspended animation, the threat of the mutagenic substance which has infected her has only been temporarily diminished. You've bought some time to find a cure, but nothing more. Well, hopefully, uh, Spike's solution will work. Let's look at the control panel. Now, if you remember the instructions, they said that to defrost an ambassador, we need to use 10 seconds defrost. To do it for long, she'll uh, basically just burn up. So, 10 seconds defrost. You've successfully defrosted Bia. There's not much time to save her, so whatever you're going to do, do it quick. I intend to. Now we can open the cryo chamber. And get Bia. And put her on the transporter pad. Make it so, Cliffy. Okay, Captain, in just a minute, I've got to make some minor, delicate micro-adjustments to the transporter. Which he does in the way he makes any adjustments to the transporter. By kicking it. Oh, Bia! I thought you were puked for sure! So did I. I feel weak. I need to rest. 
No problem, I'll tuck you back in the cryo so you can recuperate. Too bad the ship doesn't have any beds. Okay, but I've just got one question for you guys. What happened to my underwear? I have no idea what this means. Oops. Excuse me, Roger. And she goes back to sleep in the cryo chamber. Too bad that we don't have any beds. Via is currently spending some quality time recuperating in the cryo. Doesn't let you look at the control panel again. Probably to prevent you from accidentally freezing uh, her again, which is something that's not necessary because she's no longer under any threat. This is a good thing because now we have a way to uh, temporarily stop the mutants using the uh, canisters of liquid nitrogen. And we have a way to reverse, uh, to reverse the mutations. Namely, using the uh, transporter. That's just such a nice thing about the transporter. It's, it's like a deflector dish. You can use it for anything. Whatever the plot requires. It's like a, a built-in deus ex machina. Okay. The question is, now what? I guess we should head back to uh, the Goliath. So now that we have a way to deal with the mutations, or to deal with, uh, yeah, to deal with the mutants, we can uh, see if we can uh, infiltrate her and then stop Captain Quirk. Can you give me an analysis on our best course of action now that we have the cloaking device, WD-40? I recommend that we attempt to board and take the Goliath. If we achieve surprise, we can cure a portion of the Goliath's crew with the ship's transporter and enlist their aid before the rest of the Pucoids can react. Sounds like a good idea. Sounds risky. That too. I calculate a 29% chance of success, but there is a 93% chance that the Goliath could destroy the Star Confederation if we cannot prevent her from reaching the frontier. And that would be a bad thing. And just how in the playouts am I, am I supposed to get over there? The Goliath's shield will probably block our transporter. The only remaining option is to use the EVA pod, Captain Wilco. It is small enough to avoid attracting attention. Once you attach it to the Goliath and cut through her hull, you can sneak up to the bridge and shut down the shields. Then Cliffy and I can join you and effect the rest of the plan. Assuming I try this crazy stunt, where should I land the pod? My databanks do not possess that information, sir, but I calculate an 83.7% chance that Cliffy will have that information. Uh, do you? Come on, Kimo Sabe. Let's hop to it. Oh. He does actually have that information, but he won't give it to you until you actually get to the um, Goliath. I think, although I'm not entirely sure of this, I think that if you did not get the cloaking device, uh, you can actually go back for it at this point. But we already uh, have it, so we don't need to. In any case, we'll see if we can get on board the Goliath in the next video. Welcome back! We have saved Bia, thanks to um, Spike, strangely enough. But of course the threat to Starcon still exists, which means we need to sneak up on the Goliath. And that is something we can do because we have the cloaking device. And like I said before, I believe that if you didn't get it yet, you can actually go back to Kiss Your Ass Goodbye and get it now. This game is, is pretty decent about not letting you get stuck because you forgot something. So especially for a Sierra game. Of 
course, the question is, where is the Goliath? Let's see if anybody has some, any insights to offer. <sighs> what is it, Captain Wilco? I think she's uh, having trouble. Any luck getting through the Starcon yet? I'm sorry, sir. I haven't made any progress countering the frequency jamming. Um, got any ideas how to get us ourselves out of this mess? I don't know, sir. There are a lot of people out there counting on us to figure something out. I know. The lives of thousands of species on hundreds of worlds hang in the balance. They're all depending on us, sir. Humans, xenomorphs, Rigelians, Orats, and even species like dolphins. So let's get out there and win one for the flipper. Okay, just when I thought you couldn't get any weirder. How are you holding off, Flo? I'm a wreck, sir, and my bunions are killing me. Too much information, Flo. But you're dear for asking, sir. I liked you better when you hated me, definitely. We gotta stop the Goliath, sir. We can't let the pukoid mutants from hell slime the Star Confederacy. That's all well and good, Drool. Any idea how? I've been thinking about this a lot, sir. I think the only way we'll succeed is to board and take control of the Goliath ourselves. And space monkeys might fly out of my butt. I'm serious, sir. We can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Goliath, so we're going to have to find a sneaky way to get them. Well, yes, the cloaking device. We discussed this with WD-40. Yeah, same message again. Um, but we still don't know where the Goliath is. What function may I assist you with, Captain? I'd like you to scan for ships. The Goliath is currently in the vicinity of Gingivitis, sir. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Um, recommendation? We already got your recommendation, but maybe this is, gives us a different message. I recommend we proceed with caution, sir. Do you require anything further, Captain Wilco? Yes, do you have any concrete recommendation? One I could use. Yes, Captain Wilco. Right. Gingivitis, then. What coordinates, Captain? Our coordinates for Gingivitis are... are... Um, wait, I lost the manual here. Right, sorry. 81100. Zero, zero. Coordinates locked in, sir. Ready to get underway. Great. Light speed. Aye, sir. Um, anybody got anything to say about gingivitis? No. Didn't think so, but... Never hurts to try. So you just gotta wait until we get there. Hopefully we will be in time to stop the Goliath. Well, we should be, considering they can't go anywhere. As long as we have their warp motivator. We're approaching our destination, Captain. Right. Regular speed. Aye, sir. We're approaching planet Gingivitis. Sensors have detected the presence of the Goliath in the area, Captain Wilco. My calculations indicate the Goliath will be in visual range in approximately 10 seconds. 
Well, that means we had better cloak. Yarang. Yes, I did. Cloak the ship. Yes, Captain. Right away. Anything else, Captain? Nope, that's uh, about it. Affirmative, Captain. There she is. Hey, Captain, I got your tail down here to the lab. I got something you might want to take a look at. Ahead of your cloaked vessel, the battle cruiser Goliath travels towards a fateful rendezvous with Stark in command. We've got to stop that ship before it reaches Starcon and restore its crew back to normal. But how? I guess that's up to us. Does anybody have... We've got to stop the Goliath, sir, before it's too late. Maybe you should talk to Cliffy. There's got to be a way to sneak aboard that ship. Don't look at me, Captain. I'm not getting hazard pay on this tour. I think I'll sit this one out. Are you sure? There could be opportunities to shoot at stuff. Which you like. <coughs> well, best go and see what Cliffy wanted to show us. Fancy! Got a projector here. Captain, I've been making a few scans of the Goliath, and I've come up with some interesting information. Yes, like what? Oh really, like what? I beat Roger to the pun punch on that one. Well, our scan showed that the mutated crew of the Goliath has not spread evenly through the ship, the various sections of the ship, as it normally would be. Really? The engineering spaces are almost completely deserted, for example. So? Well, if you were to enter the ship at that location, you'd stand a good chance of getting aboard undetected. Well, that's a good thing. By saying you, you pretty much mean me, don't you, Cliffy? A car, sir. Once you got aboard, you could sneak up to the bridge power conduits and cut shut off the Goliath's shields. What good would that do? It would allow them to beam on board, obviously, Roger. Come on. Well, maybe a WD-40 could beam over and incapacitate the crew, and I could zip on over and set something up like we did for the Ambassador with their transporter. That sounds like a good idea. Well, we need to determine the best location to land, which we can do by looking at various sections of the ship's ship on this diagram. Not a good idea to land there, Captain. Those engines are red-hot, and the thrust turbulence will blow you away. Thrust turbulence... in space... Unless you get directly in the exhaust, that's not going to be an issue. But I agree with him about the heat of the engines. Probably not a good idea to go there. That's like Elias' bridge. That's probably Pukoit City right now. Not a good idea to land there either, then. That area is mostly crew quarters. We've registered a lot of Pukoits moving through there. Well, that's out then. That's the area where our scans show the least amount of Pukoit activity, Captain. Hmm, that sounds like a good place to land then, but let's check the rest anyway. Our section's got most of the Goliath's weapons and control systems. It's probably swamped with Pukoits. There's a lot of Pukoit activity in that area of the Goliath, Captain. That section of the Goliath's hull is full of machinery, so you can't actually enter there. The Goliath's ion emitters are located there. Lots of hard radiation. Okay, so this is definitely the place we want to land, so remember that. We're going to need it.
Can you give me an analysis of our best course of action now that we have the cloaking device? Oh. That's actually the uh, same conversation we had before we came here. You can ask Cliffy to take a look at the map again. You don't think my hair is starting to go, do you, Chief? Well, that's an important thing at this juncture. I really can't tell, sir. The light reflection of your bald spot is blinding me. Okay. Anyway, we have the information we need. We know where to board the ship. So let's go and do it in the next video. Welcome back. We need to get on board the Goliath. And the only way to do that while her shields are up is by using the uh, EVA pod, which apparently the shields wouldn't stop. I don't know how shields work in this game, so... Perfectly reasonable, I guess. Well, you know the procedure for that. I'm gonna rotate the pot. And get inside it. We don't actually have to fly it manually this time, though. Which I guess is a good thing. Use the hand icon to indicate the position on the Goliath's hull you wish to dock at. By the way, since it's not possible to get back to the Eureka at this point, you'd better make sure that you have a cu the cutting torch from the toolbox. But, since um, WD-40 did tell you that you need to cut through the hull, uh, cut through the hull, and... Um, since it's impossible to get this far without having at least looked in the toolbox, because you would have needed the anthracite tablets, the hole punch, uh, basically everything from the toolbox that you could get besides the um, the cutter this far. So it's pretty stupid if you manage to get here without having the cutting laser with you. Anyway, we need to indicate where we want to land, and this is the area we saw was safe on the schematic that Cliffy showed us. Okay, looks like we uh, attached to the hull. This is the door to the EVA pod. These controls operate the hatch mechanism for the EVA pod. The cramped interior of the pod is jammed with equipment. You have little hope of understanding in the short time available to you. Well, we only need to understand the open door button. The outer hull of the Goliath is composed of a tough titanium and duranium alloy. I don't think Spike would have any hope of getting through here, but the cutting torch does. <laughs> Having expended the laser torch's power pack cutting through the Goliath's super hard hull, you decide to leave the spent and bulky tool in the EVA pod. Too bad, might have come in handy. And it looks we have like we've ended up in the Goliath's engine room, and for some reason it looks like a internal combustion engine, even though I suppose it's a warp engine or hyperdrive or whatever. And occasionally, a lone pucoid patrols the catwalks of the engine room. Yuck, it's uglier than your grain. Aunt Helga. And you need to wait until he leaves the room before we can safely walk about. Once he has done so, we can come out of our hiding place. And we first need to go to the uh, engine.
and take a look at this control panel. This panel controls critical drive operations, including electrical functions. The Goliath's state-of-the-art star drive can propel it at velocities greater than 10 times the speed of light, which can make for a heinously expensive speeding ticket. Who's enforcing speeding laws? You're also safe from the pucoid if you're standing here. The drive is offline because Bia took the Century Products Mark II Warp Distributor crap. And we need to put it back. The Warp Distributor cap snaps into its receptacle with a quiet click, and the Goliath's star drive reawakens from its slumber. It's a bit of a weird thing to do at this point, I guess. Personally, I would have waited for it uh, uh, until we actually got control of the ship before repairing the star drive, because we've now given the mutants the ability to go where they will, if we fail. But you can't do it at any other time, and you do need to do it. Okay, now at this point we need to wait until the uh, guard comes in and leaves again before we attempt to leave this room. Otherwise things will end badly and you will get shot by their super soaker sludge guns and turn into a mutant yourself. Is it really necessary for him to crouch like that? It's not like anybody here can see him. We're in the hallways of the Goliath. And I'm just gonna save here. Let's take a look. Sure looks a lot more modern than the Eureka. This hallway is one of the hundreds that provide access to all parts of the Goliath. With pucoids running loose in the ship, traveling these corridors is a risky proposition at best. Really? No message? I guess not. Oh. Globs of pukey ooze are splattered on the hallway buttresses of the Goliath's corridors. Either that, or somebody's been hawking up some pretty serious loogies. A nearby door gives the false impression that it will be easy to exit this corridor in a normal manner. And yes, false impression. Don't try it. HALT! Boy, they were all over you like flies on... Uh, sorry. You're probably still a little sensitive about that fly thing. Quite. You can't make it out of this uh, hallway, except by using the grates on the floor. A gentle breeze wafts up through the large gratings in the decking. So, into the floor, the Jeffrey's tubes, or something. Guess what? It's a maze. The maze isn't particularly dangerous. In fact, I don't think there's really anything here that can kill you. Uh, at least not in the maze itself. So, basically, you just need some pencil and some paper. Map it out as you go. Fortunately, I have a uh, map with me. So, uh, we should start out by going north. Our end goal, actually, currently we're on deck 8. Our end goal is to get to deck 2, which is where the power controls we want are located. No, not on deck 1, deck 2. First we need to go north, and then we need to go east, but I'm going to go west instead. Because we end up going east anyway! Chased by Pac-Man. Not dangerous, pointless, but funny. Look at the hallways. You find yourself in a maze of twisty little passages. All alike. 
It doesn't say that, but it should. Um, right. Then we're gonna go north. Here it actually says which level we're on. And there is a door. Which, apparently we can't look at. These maintenance tunnels thread their way under various corridors throughout the Goliath. You can probably go anywhere in the ship via these crawl spaces, if you don't get lost first. Anyway, the door leads into the turbo shaft, and unfortunately, that is the only dangerous place there is during the, this uh, maze exploration. Now, we do need to get into several turbo shafts before we can actually get all the way up to... Uh, uh, level 2, which is where we're going. But we'll brave the turbo shaft in the next video. Welcome back. We have infiltrated the Goliath and find ourselves in a maze of maintenance corridors, or Jeffrey's tubes, I guess you could call them. I'm personally not a very big fan of mazes in games. Because they're more a test of your uh, map drawing skills than an actual puzzle. But hey, at least this one is not as bad as the one in, uh, in King's Quest V. Because at least here your uh, perspective doesn't constantly change. The only dangerous thing in this maze is this, the elevator tube. The reason it is dangerous is because if you hang around too long, don't do anything. The elevator will uh, decide to pay you a visit. Like that. Which is not good for your health. Looks like you've been spreading yourself a bit thin lately. Perhaps you'd like to try one of our less challenging games, like Mixed Up Mother Goose. Right. It's not actually all that difficult to avoid the elevator, just don't hang around doing nothing. The elevator can be in different positions when you enter the um, uh, enter the turbo shaft or elevator shaft or whatever. Um, and depending on where it is, it might be blocking where you want to go. You always want to go up as far as possible, and every time you get into a turbo shaft, you can go up two decks. Assuming that the elevator is already below you, which this time it's not. So we need to go into this hatch, which takes us to level 7. Well, we can walk around level 7 all we want, but there is nothing here. So we need to get back into the tube, and rinse and repeat until the elevator is not above us. There we go. And then we can climb all the way to the top, get in here at level 6. And then we have another maze where we need to find another elevator. Well, here we need to go south, then west. twice north I don't know who designed this ship but uh, it's not very logical east and north there you go another elevator shaft just in case I'm still going to save. Better not to tempt faith, after all. Okay. Well, it looks like the elevator is above us again, so that means we're going to have to make a little stop on level 5. Come on. Come 
During my practice run of Biz, I was much more lucky. It was usually below me when I entered the tube the first time. There we go. Note that even when you're up here, waiting too long will still get you killed. Right, level 4. You wanna go south? Then west. Then north. And west again. This maze can take really a long time to figure out, just because it's actually pretty big if you put all the decks together. And since you don't know that you need to get the deck two, although it does stand to reason that you need to get the one of the top decks. And you don't know that there's not anything useful in any of the other decks, because in some mazes, like the aforementioned King's Quest uh, 5 maze, or the Catacombs in King's Quest 6, you'd better check every single room, because there may be items you need. Which is not the case here. We just need to get to the end. We've made it to um, t uh, Elevator Shaft C. And this one will allow us to get to level 2, which is where we need it to go. Oh, um. You see, now it's below me. Notice that this is level 3. Meaning that this is level 2 and this is level 1. Since we want to go to level 2, we want to go in this one now. And now we just need to find those shield controls. For which we need to go south, west, then south, south again. And, um, east. And finally, south again. And there we go. We've located what we set out to find. The controls for the shield. I'm just gonna save here, even though there's not really anything you can do here that kills you. I like saving anyway. It's a good habit in Sierra games, just save often, no, no matter what. Even though, like I said, this game is actually quite nice about uh, not getting you in un into unwinnable situations. Even if you don't know what to do. It's the shield deactivation switch, which looks like a regular light switch. Nice that they have a, a switch like this. Seems like a bad design idea, but anyway. This corridor is slightly different from all the others you've encountered up to this point. Oh, it gets the message for the corridor. Now uh, that's a switch. Indeed it is. Let's switch it off. Uh-oh. That's Quirk's theme music. Welcome aboard, Captain Wilco. A pity you can't stay, but I'm afraid you won't be with us very much longer. I won't go down without a fight, Quirk. I know Kung Fu, Karate, Taekwondo, Judo, and several other Chinese words. Karate and Judo are not Chinese words. There's no escape for you this time, young broom jockey. Your fate is sealed. Not this time, Quirk. Now the foot's in the other shoe. You're toast. There comes WD-40! Freeze, scum! Boop cannons for the win! 
I've temporarily frozen them with my new liquid nitrogen blasters. We must quickly make our way to the transporter room where Cliffy awaits. Let's do so. Captain, I got the transport all set up to separate the primordial soup from the Goliath's crew. Quick, heed! Not like that, Captain. Hide over there behind the bulkhead and give me a signal as soon as the pukoids are in position. Okay, in this case I do actually want to save because it is possible to be too slow here, so just in case. I don't want to do the, the, the cutscene again. Just wait until everybody is in place. Now, Cliffy! Wait, that's the entire crew of the Goliath? Where's the rest of them? Yay! We did it! Ask other captain. I beamed all the pukeoid material from the crew in the, out in the space. But something tells me, namely our score, that the game isn't over yet. But what about Quirk? He's not here! Dun dun dun! Now that is a blob of slime. This is Captain Wilco. Go ahead, Eureka. Captain, thank the heavens! We were beginning to worry! I'm alright, Flo. We managed to cure what's left of the Goliath's crew, but there's no sign of Quark. Wait! Captain, I've just detected a shuttle launch from the Goliath! Oh no, it's Quark. He's heading straight for the blob. I see it, Flo. Looks like Quark's trying to make a run for it. Holy hockey pucks! He's heading straight for the blob! Uh-oh. This looks bad. Very bad. I think we're in trouble. Is there anything I can do, Captain? Right, well at this point, we need to um, either call Cliffy and tell him to beam me over to the Eureka. Don't worry about it, Flo. I'm gonna fire up the Goliath's phaser banks and zap that quirkoid blob creature into puke first. I think we can ride it out. This blob thing doesn't look that dangerous. Well, the correct option in this case is actually to beam back to the Eureka. Cliffy says he's locked onto you and standing by. Energize. After all, this basically is a big blob of garbage, and the Eureka is a garbage scout. No! The hell? <laughs> I've never seen that before. <laughs> Captain, get up here quick! The Bucoid Blob is attacking the Goliath. I um, guess we'd better get to the bridge. I'd honestly never seen that happen again with the transporter. <laughs> uh, I guess it's random. Anyway, uh. But we'll uh, do so in the next video. Welcome back. The blob of goo has absorbed Captain Quirk and is now attacking the Goliath. So I guess we'd better do something about that. Unfortunately, the uh, SCS Eureka is perfectly equipped for handling space garbage. Which is essentially what this blob is. Alright, even in the middle of a crisis, they're still just goofing off. <laughs> the Goliath's hull is nearing structural failure, Captain. She's going to implode if we don't do something. Well, I guess we need to get its attention, which means, Flo, I'm going to give you the order you've been waiting for me to give the entire game. Fire. Aye, sir.
Decloaking, sir. Locking weapons. Eat plasma, blob face. Photon torpedo sound. Uh oh, now it's coming after us. But like I said, the Eureka is perfectly equipped to deal with trash like this. Flow, activate the refuse retrieval system. Aye, sir. And there it goes. You know you shouldn't vacuum liquids, Roger. We've got the blob aboard, sir. Containment fields are holding at 200% capacity, but they won't last long. We're losing power, sir. The ship's going to fall apart any minute. Hmm. If you ask me, that falls into the bad things category. Therefore, I believe that this would be an excellent time to abandon ship. Note that it's not actually necessary to give this order. They'll abandon ship anyway if you get up. But if you give the order, you get points, which is, of course, what we want. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm out of here. And there they go. Uh, you're a brave man, Captain, and in case you don't make it out of here, I want you to know that, except for a few minor incidents, which I won't go into right now, it's been an honor serving with you. Uh, thanks, I guess. No, I don't want to get up. Sit back down, you. Because we have this blob thing in our cargo hold, and of course we cannot let that thing survive. So it is time to use the self-destruct, which is actually an act timer. Yes. And the buttons to activate and deactivate it look like a nuclear explosion. So, computer, activate the auto-destruct mechanism. Authorization Janeway Pi Omega 33 or something. Okay. Sure, why not? Let's get out of here before this place blows. Also, we should probably get Bia. Unless she's already left, of course. Ooh, the hatch is straining. That does not look good. The thick metal door strains in protest as the massive pucoid blob creature tries to liberate itself from the confines of the trash compartment. Which actually means we need to hurry. Obviously because we have only 10 minutes left before the ship blows up. Bia is trying to get our attention. As rightly she would, I guess. I guess Flo and Drool didn't think to take her with, uh, with them. Phew, I'm glad to get out of there. How come all those pretty lights are flashing? What's going on? Not much, except that the Eureka has sucked up a giant pucoid blob creature and is about to self-destruct. That's nice. I think you're still a bit woozy, Bia. Whatever you say, dear. Definitely woozy. Right, okay, let's get out of here. Energize. Dang! This beast must have blown a circuit or something. Excellent timing. Well, if it's blown a fuse, we'd better go look in the fuse box. Which is actually uh, accessible from the hallway. I haven't shown it before. Also, if you think I was forgetting about Spike... No, I wasn't. But if you pick him up now, Georgia will put him back when you leave. And that just wastes time. Uh-oh. Looks like the blob is getting free. 
The disgusting appearance of the blob is surpassed only by the rotten stench emanating from the creature. Phew, it's a good thing we don't have a smell icon in this game. But I like the smell icon. I miss it. I haven't shown this part before, I think. Uh, but it's the fuse box. You can see a bunch of fuses. High voltage circuit fuse. But to see which is which, we actually need to look at the diagram. And it also shows us which one is the foldy one already. The, which It's a red one. Well, let's look at the descriptions anyway. Scrutinizing the diagram below the power bus, you see the word lighting on the schematic next to this fuse. And if you remove it, the lighting goes off. As expected, the wiring chart indicates this fuse controls the main transporter power coupling. And it's faulty, so we need to replace it, but let's look at the rest anyway. The unenlightening phrase VGA EGA interlock appears on the diagram next to this fuse. Logical for a spaceship to have that. There's a smart channel diagram that partially obscures the writing next to this fuse. Our supply is all that's visible of the description. I think if you pull that one, then the containment field fails. The description for this fuse is Cockpit Glazing Blemish Removers. Sure, why not? The diagram claims this fuse is to the life support systems. Better not pull that one then, so this is the one we need to replace. And we replace it with the fuse we found in the toolbox earlier in the game. There we go, now to get back to the transporters. Yee yuck! A giant pus oozing blob has burst through a trash containment hatchway. You're up to your knees in it now, literally. That's not a good thing. It's blocking the way, and it has a hand for some reason. Just click on the door, or you will automatically jump over it. No need to fret. Whoa, that was close. I'd hate to try that again. I'm not sure if the transporter is working right. You better go first, Bia. Oh, Roger, you're so self-sacrificing. Good, she didn't get killed. I guess the transporter checks out. I guess so. Now we get Spike. Can't leave old Spikey to his doom, of course. And that gives us the final points. We now have full score. 5,000 pointazoids. Which means it is time for us to finish the game. Energize. Drool, get us out of here. Flo, call Starcon and tell them what happened. There we go, and there goes the Eureka. We made it, we're safe. Congratulations, crew, a job well done. You deserve most of the credit, sir. Damn right I do. Yeah, without you, we'd never have beat those puked-out mutants. Oh, Roger, you're the greatest. I can't believe I ever doubted you. Lay the course for Starbase 22, Drool. Prepare to make the jump to heinous speed. Buckle up, everybody. Engage. Ooh, I saw that. Looks like we're well on our way to getting that sun. Congratulations, you've vaporized the blobulous personification of the villainous Captain Quirk, saving countless lives from its menace. Fighting back the tremendous urge to plot a course to Disneyland, Roger and his loyal crew make their way back to Starcon. Yay! And so ends another chapter in the continuing adventures of Roger Wilco. 
Stay tuned for future episodes of our courageous custodian and his crew as they continue their quest to clean up where others have gone before. And that's the end. Well, Space Quest V is perhaps not as well remembered as its illustrious predecessor, but the quality of the game certainly has nothing to do with that. Dynamics did an excellent job. The game is great fun, has lots of neat sci-fi references, and probably has the strongest plot of the entire series, following nicely from the events of Space Quest IV. The addition of some actual characters, besides Roger, was also very welcome, and Quirk is an effective antagonist, although perhaps not quite as memorable as Vohol. On top of that, the puzzles of the game are fairly logical and well thought out, and there's plenty of hints. Usually if you get stuck, you only need to talk to your crew and they'll nudge you in the right direction. Although there's plenty of death scenes, the game is mostly devoid of the kind of random, nearly unavoidable deaths like you got in Space Quest 4 with, for instance, the cyborg. Furthermore, it's not really possible to make the game unwinnable by forgetting a crucial item somewhere, which I appreciate a lot. And they also did away with the arcade sequences and obstacle avoidance puzzles as well. All this means that the gameplay is a lot less frustrating than the previous entrants in the series. The graphics are great too. Easily as good as Space Quest 4, with some great looking backgrounds, especially on the various planets. And it might surprise you, but Space Quest 5 actually has my favorite soundtrack of the series. Some people might argue that making Roger anything other than a janitor was a mistake, and, that's perhaps, and that he's perhaps uh, too competent in this game. They're not entirely wrong. The game has a very different feel than the other games. But I for one think it's a welcome change of pace. All in all, Space Quest V is a solid entry in the series. But Roger's adventures aren't over yet, so I'll see you soon in Space Quest VI, The Spinal Frontier.